Hello, friends. How are you? Yeah, we finally made it. Got started just a little bit late tonight. We are here, and we are ready to do some flying on another one of our Slant Alpha adventures. Thanks for joining us, guys. Well, you might have seen that uh, big news over the weekend. I don't get big news. I mean, I'm sorry, trying not to do a humble brag sort of thing here. Um, but the big stream news, I guess, is that I've just uh, upgraded flight controls. We've ditched the two Logitech, a.k.a. SciTech, three-lever throttle quadrants and picked ourselves up a Honeycomb Bravo. So I got the Alpha and the Bravo here. Um, really excited. I spent a lot of time over the weekend. Of course, Wifey was away doing a girls weekend thing so I had a bunch of time to kind of do nerd stuff all weekend and spent a lot of time configuring controls haven't done a lot of testing especially with the autopilot functions of course I don't use the autopilot too much in this Mooney Ovation anyway but this is going to be a bit of a longer IFR flight in the Mooney so I'm going to see if I can get some of the functions to work um, first world problem however and I admit that uh, I'm being a bit of a jerk by telling you everything that's bad about me upgrading to a Honeycomb Bravo. <laughs> so I do. I am putting this in perspective when I say this. It's, this is a first world, first world problem. Um, it's wider. I don't have as much space on my board here for mouse movement, so I'm going to kind of be like slamming up against the C-clamp when I try to move the view around with the mouse. So I'm going to have to come up with some other solution for that, I think. Um, the keyboard sits nicely. I, I know you guys can't see this, and I, I did post a picture. Well, I guess you, if, you, if you were on the Twitter or on the announcements page, you can kind of see the keyboard sits a lot more nicely up on top of the, uh, of the two units since I don't have to have it all cockeyed to one side to make room for the uh, throttle levers. The Logitech levers were kind of up here, and the um, Bravo levers are kind of down by my, my uh, but below nipple range here. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's just taking up more space over to my right, and I've got to reach way around it to get to the mouse, and we'll have enough space. So we'll have to. It's all a work in progress, guys. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But so far, so good. I'm I'm really really happy. I mean, these two units they they install perfectly together. The the mounting um, the mounting hardware, the mounting configuration of these is just beautifully done. It's um, it's a uh, High quality stuff for sure. I uh, highly recommend the, the the movement of the levers is is beautiful. Um, it's going to take some getting used to just being in a different position, I think, and they're a little bit more resistance even with the uh, the friction lock turned all the way down. It's a lot more resistance than I'm used to in that um, you know fairly inexpensive plastic design of the Logitech ones. But uh, trackball time. You know what, Desert Fox? That's an interesting suggestion. I might well look into that that's that actually might solve the entire problem um that's this is why i have you guys here you guys are fantastic <laughs> speaking of you guys so hello to he drippy desert fox rob valkyrie no matsu-san and m stein and j smitty it's not Braden. Gosh, a lot of you piling into the Mooney already. Um, so, yes, we're flying along with a, a group flight with the Virtual USA Flying Club. And our destination tonight is, uh, what is it even called? Rock Cliff, I think. Rock something or other. Not Rock Valkyrie. <laughs> Rock Cliff? Yeah, hold on one second. I... C-Y-R-O. And I'm trying to now see... Yes, Rockcliffe. Rockcliffe, Ottawa. So, um, so that's where we are headed. It's a. Uh, it was designed as a later event on purpose because one of the things that came up in a recent poll with Virtual USA Flying Club is that the West Coast pilots um, are are not able to participate in many of these events because the timing is a little too early. So they are doing an 11 p.m. arrival in Rockcliffe, and so. What we've decided to do with our 7 p.m. stream start time was to do a bit of a, cup, a long two-hopper. Normally, we do a, a fly-in and fly-out when I when I participate in these kind of events, but we figured we'd do a long two-hopper where we start down here at Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I'm sorry, not, not Martha's Vineyard. We're going to fly over Martha's Vineyard. We're going to start down here at Nantucket. We're going to uh, fly up into the north and west, 
and then this will be our stop over Burlington, Vermont, and then Ottawa is right here. Rockcliffe is one of the satellite fields just outside of the uh, primary Ottawa International Airport. So that's the plan for tonight. This is a nice long IFR flight. You can see there is some weather in the area. The weather here at Nantucket starting to clear up. It was pretty well fogged in a little bit ago, but now it's starting to uh, move off and clear up for us. I will show you real quickly the route. And again, as always, we are going to fly this radio-based navigation only, but there's some complications with that. I'll show you. We're going to take off. We're going to head toward Martha's Vineyard VOR. We'll pick up this Victor 146, which passes right over Providence, and it ends up here at Putnam. From there northbound, this becomes a Tango route, which is a GPS-only route. It's a, The, the uh, Victor airway here was, uh, was deprecated, and I don't know why exactly, uh, because a lot of these VORs are still here. Um, at least for now, maybe they're maybe they're uh, about to decommission these VORs too. Who knows? But for right now, um, we are going to then navigate north and west to Gardner VOR. So we won't technically be on the Tango Airway. It's just we're for for our purposes, fly, flying a non RNAV. We're just going to be Putnam direct Gardner. So we'll be approximating that uh, Tango Airway, but not really. Uh, and then the same thing all the way rest of the way up, uh, direct to Keene, and then north. Uh, and that, that is that even, that might be like a DME only station right now, so that might not work out too well for us. Well, I guess we could still do it. We can st we can do the uh, three three nine off of Gardner, uh, and then we can do the uh, the one ninety eight or the you know o one eight into uh, Lebanon, and then north and west from Lebanon. Um, that also might be a DME only at this point. So yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a weird navigation issue. We'll do our best here. We might have to skip over. Yeah, we might just do Gardner and then uh, Gardner and then Montpelier. So I'll tell you what. Let's let's just hack those two out of there now, since it looks like that is indeed gonna be an issue. So I think these two stations are are essentially. GPS only. That's why you just you just have the box down here. Yeah, you just have the box. So, <clears throat> so Gardner, and it is a uh, 94 mile leg, but we can track Gardner out for half of that, and then Montpelier in for half of that. So we shouldn't have any ranging issues there. Uh, but I'm gonna refile. I'm gonna take out the the Montpelier. Yeah, so take out the Keene and Lebanon VORs in my filed flight plan. And then we'll go from direct Gardner to Montpelier, and we'll refile that. We're going to have a similar situation on leg two, where we're dealing with basically all Tango Airways up here in the in the uh, Ottawa area. So we're just going to basically do some VOR hopping here. We've got um, this Messina is still a VOR, and then I guess we've got a, a VOR at Ottawa. Yeah, here. So we'll end up in, with similar issues. <coughs> Excuse me, but that's the route plan for leg number one. And uh, since we're we've got a little bit of a late start, I think it's time to go ahead and uh, get rolling here. Okay, let's go ahead and hop into the airplane. And again, I did spend some time configuring and testing the uh, new control setup here, but we'll we'll have to kind of see how it goes. I'm sure there will be. Uh, perennial work in progress. We have already set the um, fuel and payload. We can go ahead and close the door. And uh, we'll go ahead and get battery switch on. Uh, nav and beacon lights on. Uh, fuel selector on. We're, we'll just uh, start with the left hand tank there. Uh, throttle prop and mix can all go forward. I got to switch on my console here for the fuel pump now, which is, I got to remember which one it is. I think it's that one. Yeah, there we go. We'll run the fuel pump for just a few moments. The uh, throttle and mix can now come down. You hear the gyro spinning up. Uh, magnetos can be set to both. Clear the prop area. And uh, engage the starter. Enrich the mix. Engine fires. Oil pressure comes up right away. Alternator and Radio Master come on. 
enter on the GPS a couple times. Let it finish its boot up process. For marker beacon, yeah, we'll, we'll mute the marker beacons. There, okay, that's done. Uh, no, it's still kind of acquiring. Well, let's see. I, I didn't use that word on purpose, but it's right there on the screen. It's acquiring satellites, so we'll give it a few moments to do that, and then we'll put the message screen up over that. Of course, for those of you new to the channel, we pretend that this GPS is not here. This is uh, slant alpha means radio-based navigation only. So we're going to do all this nav nav by old school analog radio signals only and we're just going to pretend that this is not here and then a plane where you uh you, you still have your your redundant com one nav one and then com two nav two you would just have a duplicate of this box sitting on top of it as your com one and nav one so that's what we're going to imagine we see yeah what gps no matter sign exactly that's in the, in the exact right spirit well so while we're down here we can turn the transponder on we'll go ahead and put it in altitude mode now no reason not to Um, let's see. So that's all done. Flight plan has been sent. I don't think last I checked we had an ATIS at uh, Martha's Vineyard. We do have vets in air traffic control in Boston Center. And I, I believe ever since Boston's uh, TRACON in real world merged up with uh, Manchester and Cape area, I think that this is all done on, on Boston as well. So we'll check in with 330, see if he's covering the Cape area as well. He might not be. He might only be covering the core N90. Um, uh, no, N90 is New York. Uh, the, the core A90, I think, is what it is. Um, but we will uh, we'll check in with him, see if he's covering the Cape area. And if he's not, he'll probably kick us over to uh, the center controller on 347. But we'll check in with approach first, 133.0, see what they say. Jen says he's uh Jen a lot since he's he's only the core Boston area. Crazy connects says A90 would cover all three. Yeah, so he might just be the Boston area only. Alright, well we'll check in on 347 first and then see what he says. But with that lead there from the chat, thank you guys. Uh, seems like that's more likely to be our correct solution. You can the, the key point is that you can never really rely on just that generic circle sometimes you can't even rely on the uh, the shape that's drawn in um, map.vatsim.net aka simware because sometimes controllers are only covering a portion of uh, of that sector rather than the entire thing so we'll uh whoops let me take that away okay 34 7 transmitting and receiving should be good oh <laughs> Crazy Canuck says, I am your center controller. I'll save you the time. <laughs> Very good. All right, well, that, I guess that makes it a definitive answer. All right, well, let me get ready for my clearance call then. No pressure since you're right here. Uh, yep, yeah, so we... Oh, and let's, if we're going to say we have the weather at Nantucket, then I guess I should probably not lie to him and actually grab the weather. <laughs> K A C K. Two five zero at ten. So yeah, two four is the usual, and twenty nine sixty three. So um, two four is kind of the usual departing and arriving. Winds prevail out of the west a lot of the time. So, um, so that's kind of uh, not unexpected. All right, let's get back to my flow list and then we'll make our clearance call here in just a moment. Let's uh, so check agents from meter we did. Set out altimeter 29 what did I say it was? 63? Yeah, 2963 we'll set that here. Yeah, field elevation's next to nothing we know that anyway. Um, looks like it's being simulated the pressure simulated is a little bit higher than the pressure observed so we'll just set it to what Makes the fuel elevation be correctly at 47 feet. So we'll go with that. That's good. Enough. Global 196 Boston Center. Hello. Climb and maintain flight level 360. As right, so altimeter set, okay. field elevation verified. Com radio set. Let's go ahead and obtain our clearance, guys. Boston Center, Mooney 514 Delta Victor's on the ground in Nantucket with the weather IFR to Burlington. Mooney 514 Delta Victor, Boston Center. Hello, cleared to Burlington Airport. Radar vectors, Martha's Vineyard as filed. Climb and maintain 2,000 and expect 8,000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure on this frequency and the squawk. 
5305. All right, clear to Burlington. We'll get radar vectors to Martha's Vineyard, then as filed. We'll maintain 2,000, expecting 8,010, 34-7, and 5305, 514 Delta Victor. Money 4 Delta Victor, read back is correct. Cape altimeter is 2963, advise ready to taxi, runway 24. All right, 2963, we'll call it a few for runway 24, 514 Delta Victor, thanks. All right. So that's all. As expected. Keeper 007, currently flight level 110. Walk was, I'm going to turn Keeper 007, Boston Center, flash. hello, clear direct canny, climb and maintain flight level uh, Level in the uh, street up it looks uh, good, but it's a little zero, heavy in my ears, so I'm going to just turn it down just a bit. Okay, um, nice to be back. All right, so the squawk was 5305. We'll get that punched in. 5305. We already got the mode C on. Um, nav and ADF tuners. We will get radar vectors to Martha's Vineyard, which is this first VOR here. Again, I'm just I'm struggling to move the mouse around in this limited space. We'll figure something out. So it'll probably take me a month, but I'll figure something out. 14.5 is the uh, first nav um, frequency, so we'll get that set up here, and then nav uh, two or nav one rather. 14.5. Swap that in. The this direction two is going to be something like a 303. Um, yeah, so something like a 303. So we'll. By the time we go out on runway 24, it's probably going to be more like a 304, 305, something like that. So we'll bump it up to there. We'll set the heading bug to runway heading of 24. Get them that to be exact, but just in case, just A is a reference for our taxi. We should be taxiing in a 06 direction to take off on 24. Uh, and then also, just in case we you have any issue, we'll, we'll, we'll want to fly that runway heading um, until we are able to figure out what we're going to do to return to the airport. Um, the next nav station up the way is 15-6, so we'll get that set in the standby. I don't think we need to start swapping anything in the nav 2 just yet. Uh, we should be able to manage just with a back and forth on the standby, for, so 15-6, and we'll hold uh, the nav 2 for our missed approach at Burlington, probably get up there. Okay, 15-6 is the next one. Okay, uh, what is next? So, uh, navigate the tuners is needed. Heading bug initial altitude was 2,000. We'll set that there. The uh, speed brake can be checked. Um, can't really see it on that side. Okay, 2596. Looks like I got traffic 20 miles ahead of you that just paused yeah, at your altitude good. level 370 on an unknown aircraft type. Have you fly heading 080 vectors for that traffic? Uh, flaps. 0 to avoid the traffic and you had 2596. Just make sure that they operate. We're checking both sides to make sure that the actual control surfaces operate, but we're also looking at the interior indicator, and then we'll go ahead and set that back in to take off. Uh, trim should be set, and I've got I've got the wheel on the Bravo. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the wheel yet. So I so right now I've got the wheel and the, center, the, the thumb West switch set to uh, trim adjustment since the wheel really um, at it, it only center acts as a button anyway in the up or down direction. It's not it doesn't move any faster if you change the wheel faster. Uh, it just it it registers as a button press. So. But right now I've got that trim control set to both, and I'll probably try to use the wheel, uh, but I got the thumb switch just in case I hate it. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, so flaps are set to take off, trim sets, uh, taxi routing. Okay, 2596, contact Moncton Center 132.2, let them know you're heading. Uh, basically, I mean, we're down here at the FBO ranch, so we're basically going to taxi uh, straight out of the six direction via golf. He should give us a crossing of 15 and 33. Three. So we do need to be aware of that and make sure we get that in our taxi instructions. And what's the next thing? Okay, I think we're good. Taxi light can come on, parking brake can come off. Jet Blue 2601, contact New York Center 125.32. Good day. 
just double check and make sure it's still no ATIS, so we'll just call in uh, with the weather. We're in the extended one, two, five point three two. Uh, thanks for the help. Have a good night. Zero six is over our right shoulder. It looks like we're facing Delta fifty nine descend at pilot so. discretion. Maintain flight level two four zero. And, uh, I was tempted to pull that last zero. lever up because that used to be my parking brake control. Alright, uh. Okay, yep, we're ready to go. Center 3514 Delta Victor's uh, ready to taxi runway 24 in Nantucket. Money 4 Delta Victor, runway 24, taxi via Echo, cross runway 15. 24 via Echo and cross 15, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Okay, Echo is the inner one closest. So we have Foxtrot, we got Golf, and Echo is the second parallel that's closest to the runway. So we will head over that way. Not exactly sure where the ramp entrance is, but we'll taxi north and east until we find it. <clears throat> Ryan95 is here, says I should get a mouse with a DPI switch. I wish I even knew what a DPI switch was. <laughs> Maybe if I knew what a DPI switch was, I would agree with you that I must have one. Although I'm liking the trackball idea, really, really, at the moment. Or just change the sensitivity? Yes, yeah, or so I don't need to move it as far, you mean, Ryan? Twenty-six part two is here. MSFS lover has checked in. Fireheart Macbeth is here. Twenty-six part two. Yeah, hopefully your your question got answered by now since you saw the Nantucket diagram on the screen and I called I called the airport Nantucket a couple times on the radio. <laughs> Kowalski13 is with us on the follow. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, he drippy. Wing slight vibes. Yeah, I don't remember if, if uh, Nantucket to Burlington is um, is one of the wing slights, but certainly this is the area that we got very, very familiar with when we did that series. Flying here within the Boston Virtual Air TCC airspace. Oh, a DPI switch. Dots per inch. Okay, so I could instantly switch the mouse into a uh, higher sensitivity mode. Okay, I got you, friend of all. Thank you for the explanation. Now, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually liking the trackball idea, honestly. Boston Center, Echo Romeo Lima, climbing for flight level 310. Aircraft calling and full Nate call sign, please, on ATC. All right, let's see. Uh, Boston Center, Charlie Fox, or Echo Romeo Lima, climbing for flight level 310. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, we'll do a quick run up. Of course, I guess I didn't really do the uh, a brake check, but I guess Center, stopping evening, there as I did has now served the purpose Flight level 100, I wonder if you had any shortcuts for us tonight. All right, so we'll hold the brakes here. Let's um, and November run two, the Charlie RPMs Lima, up to 2200. We'll have a shortcut here for you shortly, just getting in trail of the aircraft. Roger for two, Charlie Lima. Let's do a quick uh, magneto check first of all. Turn the mag switch down to just the left side. We'll watch the RPMs drop by, oh, uh, say about 30. Okay, good. Put it back to both and it should recover that. Okay, we'll put the mag switch down to just the right side. Okay, another 30 RPM drop, no problem. Back to both, should recover that. Good, we'll flex the prop lever down and back up three times. And again, make sure that it comes all the way down and recovers. Looks like we did taxi to the correct direction because the runway is to our ahead to our right and the heading bug is to our right, so that's good. A little bit of a sanity check there. And then we'll just 
check a little check of the mix um, mix lever as well. Okay, throttles down. We are ready to go. The center moving five one four Delta Victor short of two four Nantucket ready. Twenty four Delta Victor turn right heading two seven zero. The winds two six zero one zero runway two four clear for takeoff. Alright, right to 270, clear for takeoff, 24514 off of it. Okay, heading bug now set to our new assigned heading. Strobe lights on. Landing lights on. Recognition lights on. Remember 2 Charlie Lima, clear direct ocean. That. Clear direct ocean, 2 Charlie Lima, thank you. Oh, and Pito Heat is now that switch over there. <laughs> Man, I got switches for everything now. Oh, turned it a little short. Alright guys. Engines responding responding normally. Takeoff power set, all temperatures and pressures reading. still weird. I haven't quite figured out the trim yet. <laughs> that center 35 and 4 Delta Victor's off Martha's Vineyard, 1,300 going to. 24 Delta Victor, radar contact, climb and maintain 8,000. 8,000, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Okay, 8,000 now set. Pressure to 24. Air Canada 845, contact Montreal Center 128.77. Control the RPMs to 24. Montreal Center 28777. Just maintain about 105 in the climb. Time to get airborne 750. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I had planned to be up by 740. 24 Delta Victor, right turn, clear direct Martha's Vineyard. Alright, uh, right turn, direct Martha's Vineyard, 5 before Delta Victor. Alright, so we'll move the uh, OBS until it centers, and then just follow that. Fox, good day, Sunwing 445, turn answer. And Sunwing 445, just quickly leave my airspace now. In fact, you can contact uh, Moncton Center 132.2, have a good night. Okay, 32 to uh, 7445, thanks, guys. Alright, so we got the arrow centered. We're tracking that, we're pitched to maintain 105, which I've now got via the trim wheel, so we'll see how that goes, see how that feels for me. Let's maintain 24 on the manifold pressure, 200, yeah, 2400 on the RPMs. Mix lean to the middle of that blue arc there. 23 miles and counting down to Martha's Vineyard VOR. Okay, Sunwing 180 with request. Go ahead. Do you have any 
sense of what runway we could expect in Boston? Be runway 27. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to climb to 8. We're going to keep it about 105 knots in the climb. That is our best rate of climb speed in this aircraft. We're going to keep the manifold pressure up to 24. Delta 59, descend via the Ocean 5 arrival, runway 27. It's hover, has it the follow button, it's hover, welcome. Number 2, Charlie Lima, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain flight level 290. Descend 290 at my discretion. Doing well, Hover. It's, um, we're, we're joining an, an event hosted by the Virtual USA Flying Club up in Rockcliffe, and just outside of Ottawa, Canada. We just departed out of Martha's Vineyard. The uh, target arrival time on this, this is basically just a fly, a free-for-all fly-in, fly-in from wherever you want to fly in from. And the target arrival time, 11 p.m. Eastern time, a little bit of a later event, and uh, that was one of the things that the club wanted to do to accommodate uh, folks that are west coast and so occasionally host these events that are a little bit later so that means a late night for us east coasters but what it meant for me was an opportunity to do a nice long IFR flight in this uh, Mooney Ovation for you starting from Martha's Vineyard we're going to wind our way up through the Boston ARTCC airspace heading up to Burlington Vermont that'll be our stopover tonight a second, somewhat shorter hop from Burlington out to Rockcliffe. Boston Center, good evening at Arctic 502, flight level 390. 26.2 says, Boston Center, hello, is doing Ebony. Twitch fun? I'm thinking of trying it. Ebony for Arctic 502, um, If I get flight sim and learn bat sim. Well, well, first of all, you can tw you can Twitch stream anything you want. It doesn't have to be flight sim. It doesn't have to be bat sim. Uh, it is fun. In order to build an audience, it's a lot of time investment and dedication and consistency. So if, if you really want, you know, what, dozens of viewers and followers and things like that, that's, um, you know, this we're, what, we're four and a half years into this stream to get it where it's been. Um, so you've got to be willing to understand that you're going to start smaller and you're going to slowly build your audience over time. And so it, it's not an immediate reward for sure. Air Canada 765, New York Center 125. But yeah, it's Canada. rewarding, and, and depending on what your goals are, you can, you know, if your goal is just to kind of, you know, do it socially and just for friends or whatnot, then yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a blast. Air Canada if your goal is to, like I said, your goal is to do, you know, is to build an audience, kind of like what we have on this channel, and it just takes a lot of time, investment, dedication, and marketing, networking getting involved in different aspects of the community, spreading the word about your channel, that kind of thing. It's Hover says, I'm wondering if you know the minimum age required to become a VATSIM controller. I need to be 13 to sign up for VATSIM, wondering about being a controller, I'm trying to get my son involved. Um, most divisions, there is no minimum age requirement for controlling. So 13 is it. I heard we actually had this discussion in the VATSIM community server just a couple days ago, so it's funny that you bring that up now. Um, there are a few divisions in Europe that I think require 16 to become a controller, but in, at least in that USA, there's no minimum age to control, so the same minimum age applies for flying or controlling. Boston Center, November 2, three, one, I think we make sure we're keeping 24 in the manifold pressure. Center, hello, climb and maintain flight level 300. Climb and maintain 300, one tangle Leading out to the middle of that blue arc there. Boston Center, good evening, WestJet 750 through... Uh, and we still hand flying the plane. WestJet 750, Boston Center, low. Do I ever fly the TBM um, V1 rotate? No, I don't fly any turboprops. Server props to me have identity crisis. They can't figure out if they're a proper jet. <laughs> no, my main aircraft here are the uh, the 152, the Mooney Ovation, the Boeing 247D, um, and the 
the Just Flight BAE 146. Those are the four that we fly primarily, and those are the four that we fly with that old school radio based navigation. And then we do also fly that Citation CJ4 and the PMTG 737 on occasion, where we would have um, where we'd have the uh, a flight management computer and RNAV capability. So those are the six core planes. I, I, I have kind of shelved the DC-6 for a little while, uh, just having some issues with the um, with uh, controlling it, and I just I, I wasn't sure how much of it was pilot error, how much of it was uh, just a poor simulation of, of things like the altitude hold, um, some stuff on final where it continually would off track with one side, even if the uh, engine power was all set symmetrically, so I, I kind of shelved it because I wasn't, like I said, I just wasn't sure if it was me or, or the plane, but me and the plane weren't getting along. Regardless of whose fault it was, me and that plane were not getting along. Uh, so I kind of have shelved the DC-6 for the, for the time being, but uh, those six that I gave you, those are the six that I fly on a regular basis. All right, so we're leveling it out at 8,000. I'm kind of trying to Trying to do that with the trim wheel here. And then as the speed comes up, we'll have to continue to trim down. Oh, drifting off my assigned uh, path here. American 180, descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival, runway 27, Boston altimeter 2, Niner 63. I will descend via the arrival. Okay. So 26.2 uh, is asking about engine failures. I, I tend to have random failures turned off for flying on that sim because particularly when you're flying in busy events on that sim, simulated emergencies are disruptive. I mean, in the real world, obviously, a, an emergency is priority. Everyone, you know, life is in danger. Everyone must, you know, defer to the emergency aircraft and give them priority, and the controller has to give them their attention. Um, you know, on that sim, simulated emergencies can be done professionally and calmly, and sometimes they're done by kids who want attention, um, and sometimes they are done because pilots don't know what they're doing and their plane has uh, punished them for not proper engine management. So, um, so that sim's policy is if you have an emergency, it's up to the controller as to whether you can do that online or whether you can uh, must disconnect and continue that emergency offline. So I, for that purpose, I have the, the failures um, disabled. You know, also, that sim air traffic control isn't as fully staffed as a real world air traffic control center, so they don't have all the resources to devote to an emergency that Echo, Romeo, so for that reason, center, uh, since we do most of our flying on that sim, I do tend to uh, Romeo, not have Delta random failures Boston, enabled. Occasionally, I will have a failure that is pilot generated, i.e., the plane fails because I screwed something up. Um, and that has happened on stream a couple of times. We've had some icing issues. We've, seven, you know, we've had the Boeing 247 that we've blown an engine in. So yes, occasionally, but uh, random failures I have turned off, and it's just because that sim's ATC staffing is not always equipped to uh, to handle it. All right, we've got it nicely trimmed out at eight thousand here now. Uh, although I just have should, should be reducing the manifold pressure to 22 and the RPMs to 22. Speaking of engine management, for Westjet 775 CM, November 2, Charlie Lima, descend via the Ocean 5 arrival, runway 27, Boston, altimeter 2963. Ocean 5 arrival, runway 27, and altimeter is 2963 at Boston, 2 Charlie Lima. Speedbird 7, call Boston, please. to cross over our VOR as well. Just trying to do some engine Global management 196, here. Nice and stable. Nice and stable, so 1525. So we're going to get to 1475. United 4033, Boston, center, hello, climb and maintain, flight level 210. 
I don't want to have my chart over here, so you figure out what direction I'm supposed to leave Martha's Vineyard VOR at. So we're going to depart that on a 313. Not too far off from where we came in on it at. So there's three. Here for seven high. I tried to call you three times, sir. Let me know if you do need to step One, away, two, and I can acknowledge three. that. No problem, sir. Uh, the issue is you're currently flying at level three six zero. You're uh, cruise, sorry, cleared up to three three zero. So just say your intentions, please. Could we go up to flight level three six zero? It's speed zero zero. Speed seven. Your eastbound flight flight level three six zero is not uh, applicable. You can give you three five zero three. We can take 370 as few visitors. 370, climb 18, level 370. Sorry, so we're going to be outbound on a 313 radio, so we got that dialed in. We picked up about 500 extra feet while I was fiddling with that. Bring it back, uh, we're 2.2 miles from the VOR, so it's going to be fruitless to chase that too much. American 180, contact Boston approach 133.0. 133.2 for American 180, thanks for the help. Yeah, the needle's kind of wigwagging away from us, but we're pa passing over the VOR now, essentially. Yeah, 433, clear direct Alex, climb maintain, flight level 370. Correct, Alex, uh, to 370. Okay, we lost the VOR signal now. Still trying to trend down to get back to 8,000 here. Uh, one thing I do need to do in short order is uh, a fuel tank switch. Uh, bear with me in the chat, guys. I, I know there's a bunch of questions. I'll get to them in just a moment. Gently correct the course to get on that 313, and then we're just trying to keep the trim down. Get back to that 8,000. All right, so 22 on the manifold pressure, 22 on the RPMs. Mix is leaned to uh, for 1525 is where the exhaust gas temp peaks, so I get the mix leaned out to its. 50 degrees rich at that point, so 1475-ish. There we go. All right, so we're now established on that outbound leg of uh, 313 from Martha's Vineyard, north, north and westbound. Not doing a bang-up job on the... Uh, Force control or the or the altitude, really, honestly. So somebody was asking about autopilot. I don't answer your question. Nineteen eighty one, Boston Center. Hello, clear, direct okay, J fund. Yeah, a little bit better now. Direct J fund. And then the thing to note on the chart here. chart is outbound on 313 it's a 42 mile leg so at 21 miles would be a halfway point and then we'll, we'll, we'll transition from navigating outbound from Martha's Vineyard to where we're navigating inbound to Providence on 15-6 and notice outbound from Martha's Vineyard we're on a 313 you would think that would be a 133 it is one degree off um, because these aren't these aren't really straight lines like they look. So there is some variance from one end of the leg to another. That's normal. Sometimes it's way more egregious than that. Sometimes it's five, six degrees. All right, let's go ahead and get our 
our tank switch done. Let's go ahead and see the fuel boost pump. I think I put on that switch there. Yes, I did. Uh, engine gauges all look good. Let's switch from the left side to the right side. Engine gauges still look good. We have to switch our boost pump. Now that I seem to have her nice and stable, we might go ahead and try um, engaging the uh, autopilot, see how we do it. Yeah. Autopilot, and nav. Nope, doesn't like the nav button. See if I can catch up with the chat. Now, we did say our transition was going to take place 21 miles out. We're already 13 miles out, so we'll need to be ready to make that navigation switch. Okay, so we got 20 gallons on the left, 26 on the right, 22, 22, 50 rich peak. Everything's good. Uh, we'll just make sure that it's the right number that counts down. We are at our wild cruise of 8,000, and everything is looking good. Okay, yeah, it's the right tank now counting down, so we're, good. we're coming back into balance. And the uh, autopilot um, buttons on the on the controls uh, seem to be working fine, so that's cool. Alright, let me catch up with some of the questions in the chat. Sorry, guys, I hope that you uh, have been enjoying the show, and uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, so have you ever had engine failure? I think we covered that one there, uh, 26.2. Uh, 26.2 also asks, are you a private or a commercial pilot? No, I am a sim pilot only. 0.0, .0 hours real world. Ryan, are you hand flying this or autopilot? I was at the time that you asked, uh, completely hand flying it. 3-0 for 3-9. 202 pop call, Boston Center. Yeah, so 26.2. Do I have a certificate uh, at all? No. Nope. 0, 0 hours. I've been doing this sim thing for, oh, about 40 years. And the sims now, obviously, are slightly more realistic than they were when I started. But, yeah, I've been doing this sim thing for an awful long time, but now this is just a... Uh, an obsessively Remember, pursued Lima, hobby for Boston, me. Not, not anything that I do for a living. In the real world, I do manage, a, I am a transportation there. manager of sorts, but everything that I manage stays firmly planted on the ground, at least in the best case scenario. Okay, I think we're coming up on that point where we are going to... Uh, Transition to being inbound to Providence. So first thing first, let's go ahead and set her up the heading mode. Okay, yeah, switch it into heading mode. Can I do that here? Yep. Okay. All right. Now let's swap to where we are navigating. Providence Center. Good evening, Air Canada A069. Flight level 360. We 
We're navigating outbound okay, to 15 15 five. We're now going to now navigate inbound to 15 six. Boxing Let's go ahead and make that swap here. Alright, Boxing Center, now let's go. November 7, 2A, Roman Sierra, Boxing Center, low. And the inbound course is a 2 which is a 3 one on the inbound side, so we'll bump that over. Before Delta line. Victor, Providence, altimeter 2-9 or 6-4. 2-9 or 6-4, 5 before Delta Victor. Alright, so it looks like we've drifted slightly left, of course. So we'll just use the heading button to correct two, that. Center, one, three, two, point two, two, nine, or six, four, right, now, where, where, where we started, we, we configured out just because of the ground elevation that what was being simulated was slightly higher than what was being reported. But now that we're airborne and we don't have a ground reference, I'll just go ahead and set it to what it gives me. You see the autopilot's kind of struggling. I'm doing this really slowly because the autopilot's kind of struggling to try and maintain that 8,000 while I'm moving the goalpost on it. <laughs> uh, since we're coming back into nav mode here, or we're coming back into nav compliance, I'm going to put it back into nav mode. Turn, touch my button. Yep, that worked. Let's figure out what the next navigation step is going to be. So after Providence, uh, it's a pretty short, like a 23-mile leg. So I think after Providence, you know, we really should go, what, uh, halfway out, so to, uh, to 11 and a half miles out and then 11 and a half miles inbound to Putnam. The reason you switch at the halfway point is just because of the inherent inaccuracy in slant alpha navigation. So, you know, the further away you are from a nav station, the more slightly off course you can be. So that's why in an ideal world, you switch at the halfway point because that's the maximum off course you can be. If you get, you know, if you stay navigating from your away station, then the closer you get to Putnam, the further off course you might be, depending on the accuracy of your gauges. So that's why the halfway point is usually preferred unless there's some notation on the chart. Occasionally, there's a notation that says you should switch somewhere else for some other reason, radio reception range or what have you. But generally, you switch at the halfway point. However, because this is such a short leg, instead of navigating over Providence and then 11 miles and then switching and then 11 miles and then switching again, I think we'll save ourselves a little bit of work because it's not too far off course will be uh, the short of the leg. So as soon as we pass over Providence, we'll just switch over to where we're navigating straight into Putnam and we'll go from there. And after all that talk, and see we're already 15 miles and counting down to uh, Providence. 26 points says I did get my private certificate, but too expensive to continue further. Yeah, expense is one of the reasons, um, 26.2, that, uh, that I never did. As a younger man, it was just probably some different life choices I should have made. That would have made life easier for me in that regard. Uh, as an older guy, I, I feel like I probably have. Well, I don't know. My wife would disagree. Probably. Um, I have a little more disposable income now than I used to, let's put it that way. But, um, but at this point, it's more of a health issue than a, uh, than a finance issue. Russia 50, contact Moncton Center, 132.2. Moncton 322, West got 750. But, I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. The other, I mean, it's not too bad in the sim, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's never going to be the same as, as doing it for real. Two years. But it's not a bad backup plan to do it in the sim, especially now, you know, as, as gorgeous as this is, as realistic as it is, as breathtaking as it is. And the other thing in the sim, number one, there's no danger. If you mess up, you don't die. Number two, you can fly a wider variety of planes than you American would be able to in real world. Send via the robot and number three, arrival. you can fly a much wider Runway variety of locations than you could in real world. So, it ain't all bad, man. There's definitely some, uh, yeah, it feels, well, it feels like it's, it's, it's the expense was, the expense was, I think, you know, already kind of covered, but yeah, exactly. Good Fixins has resubscribed. That's a two-year subscription. Good Fixins, thank you so much. Time to make an honest stream follower out of good fixes, I know. Well, he's, he's uh, 
remained in wonderful, glorious service as uh, one of our moderators as well. And now, fortunately, this channel, traditionally, and I'll say this and I'll knock on wood, hasn't required a, a great deal of moderation. I really do think that... There's uh, Springer Lake and Newer Niner at Papa, the water channel altimeter is 2974. The quality of this audience surpasses the quantity of others, for sure. Yeah, good fix this is, uh, yeah, he hasn't put a ring on my finger yet. Well, you know, once you get to three years, we'll talk. <laughs> KW for life is here. Seven miles from Providence now. Fuel balance is looking good. Uh, engine parameters all looking good. We do have the autopilot kind of. Uh... <laughs> we do have the autopilot. <laughs> we do have the autopilot uh, doing some of the heavy lifting for us at this point. I don't normally. So a, a lot of times, you know, you'll see me hand fly the entire night in this way, you know, almost, almost ex exclusively. This first trip, though, being a little bit of a longer one, this is about an hour and 40 minute uh, first leg, I think you said. Cap 8543, Boston Center, low, you clear direct to BizX, climb and maintain. So with that, I felt like it was appropriate to go ahead and get the autopilot involved, and plus, like I, I, as I was saying before, I'm kind of halfway testing the uh, autopilot functions. I think this knob is Supposed to what did I decide this knob is? Okay, this knob adjusts uh, the OBS2. So that's good. Okay, yeah, because I couldn't get it to work with the uh, autopilot, uh, the, uh, the altitude capture. So I decided just to make it OBS2. Alright, four miles from Putnam, or Providence rather. Moving into a section with some icing warnings too. We're going to need to be careful. We are in negative seven degree temperatures. We see negative eight degree temperatures here, and we do see some clouds above us. Southwest 1981 descent at Palos Discretion. So we need to be careful about this. Remember, the Moody has no anti-icing capability, so we're going to have to really be careful about what we uh, what we encounter on the way. So 115.6 and then 117.4, which I don't think, yeah, I should, if, I'm, if I was a good pilot, I would have been ahead of that uh, transition there. So 117.4 is now set in the standby. We're getting ready to pass over the VOR, so we'll pop it into... Take care, buddy. Prime Air 4211. We'll see you at the which is a 321. So that'll be. Boston Center, United 292, flight level 290 at Kennedy. We'll uh, descend and maintain uh, two there, so we'll heading over to the heading boat over to the right. Navigation mode to let it capture that. So yeah, cheating a little bit by not the normal. We're saving ourselves one transition here. So normally, passing over Providence would mean we just track the three, two, one outbound to eleven and a half miles, and then the three, two, one inbound to put them for eleven and a half miles. Since this is such a short leg, we decided to save ourselves a transition, cheating. Let's save ourselves one transition by going just uh, just direct to Putnam on that uh, 321. Shouldn't be too much lateral deviation possible there in that extra 11 miles, so I think we'll be okay. North and westbound then from, from uh, Putnam, we're going to be following, approximating this Tango Airway, but remember, 
that Tango Airway is only technically navigable via RNAV. So we are going to be just, instead of being on the airway, we're just going to go from Putnam direct to Gardner. So that's the way we filed it. We didn't file it as Tango 393. We just filed it as Putnam Gardner. Nothing in between. So how we get from Putnam to Gardner is really on us. Although Delta a direct path is prescribed, that's what we found, so that's what we have to fly. But we would not technically be on that airway, we would not technically be subject to the altitude restrictions on that airway. Number 7 Mike Alpha, maintain 250 knots or greater so for we safety. Just, we'll just navigate directly to Gardner on 110.6 as our next navigation step after. So 110.6 is what we'll do to get, get again, be one step ahead that of I the aircraft and be ready uh, to go. 225 knot, it might be any percent Mike Alpha. That's number 7 Mike Alpha on Roebuck 3, you'll see the speeds indicated there indicate you need to be flying at 270 knots, uh, but I believe that speed is somewhere near the Norwich VOR. If you're unable that, uh, I'll have to get you redirected off of the route, so just stand by. Roger that. Uh, and it's going to be a right turn after Putnam on 17.4. It's going to be a right turn basically northbound, 3.59. So what we'll do is we'll dial that into the heading bug ahead of time just to save us from having to remember it. We'll just know America that's 11, 46, our turn. contact pause and approach 133.0. Right Fuel balance is still looking good, so we're still burning out of the right tank. We'll let that surpass the left tank and maybe burn down to about 16 or 15 before we switch again. For, uh, vector for your speed, the sediment team level 190. Heading 090 and maintain 190. 190. There, number Ryan's asking about night flying. Now I typically fly bottom. in the uh, daytime. I, I, I do fly with real weather, Boston, um, but I, I, since obviously I'm always streaming after work in the real world, so I would always be flying at night if I was flying real time all the time. I don't like flying at night. I like seeing the scenery. That's part of the joy of flying. So I always back the sim time up a few hours so that we are flying at daylight. I mean, it'll supposed to be bad once in a while, just for the variety, but most Boston of my Center, flying evening, enjoyment, Canada, 4291, as much as I, as much as I focus, I always catch myself, because, of, because we do this very procedural kind of IFR flight, we typically focus so much on the panel that we don't really do a lot of just looking out the window sometimes. Boston, Not always the case, but it's still the case, regardless of whether I'm focusing on it or whether it's just there in the background, it is the case to me that enjoying watching the beautiful scenery go by is, is part of the reason I do this, so I very rarely would find myself flying at night given the choice. United 292, descend and maintain level 230. Kind of 230, don't call you maybe 292. BG Golfer, or... BJ Golfer, sorry. BJ Golfer says, is there a night or a time that's good to make the dive in the bat sim? Um, your, your, the rest of your sentiment there, I would hate to Boston do it at a Center, really busy time. Nine or eight, five, level 7, your sentiment is correct. You don't want to uh, you don't want to dive in when it's very, very busy. Eight, five, Quebec, Boston, the the thing is, where and when that is, is, is somewhat unpredictable. So what you want to do is get yourself this app called That Spy, or you can also do a web web-based version, which is map.datsim.net. And then at any given day or time, you just need to hunt around and find a control sector that's not that busy. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you might find uh, like just an approach controller. Looks like there's not too much going on at Sacramento, but there's a Sacramento approach controller on. This would be a great, great spot for a first time. Uh, Fort Worth. A little bit busier. Looks like seven or eight planes, maybe well, maybe about a dozen planes in their airspace there. But it's not as busy as it is up here in the Northeast where Boston tends to get mobbed. Now Boston, at least they've got a Bradley approach United controller and a Boston approach Vienna controller Robot taking some of this workload off of them. So actually the, the center airspace that we're in now isn't that bad. Uh, Cleveland, you know, Indianapolis, um, 
Louisville approach is on. They don't have really don't look like a lot of traffic. So you just really want to just hunt around. But if there's some sort of a published event, if you go to vatusa.net, well, I guess I'll show you that too. Seven miles until our transition. I got a moment to run. This is what you want to do. You just, at, and, and later on, you'll, you'll look on this site because you want Southwest to be part of this. Southwest 1981, send via the J-Fund to arrival, runway 27, Boston. But pilot tools and events calendar. Right, send via the J-Fund arrival. And this is, uh, at, when you first start, you want to look at these published events and make sure you stay away from them. <laughs> Once you get comfortable, though, you will, you will find yourself wanting to gravitate toward them. Boston, good evening, JetBlue 12. So hopefully that makes sense. Jetblue 1218 Boston Center, hello, clear, direct robot climbing team. Flight Lay, what, are we, what are we up to today? We're flying into Rock Cliff in Ottawa, Canada. We took off from Nantucket. We're heading up to Burlington, Vermont. The Virtual USA Flying Club is organizing this fly-in to Rock Cliff in Canada. But they've set a uh, later target. They're trying to accommodate West Coasters a little bit more with this particular event. So they've set a later target arrival time than we're used to. So it's going to be 11 p.m. Eastern time, so we decided to well, start here, all the way down to Nantucket and go all the way across north and west, and across here, the Boston Air TCC airspace, stop over at Burlington, and then we're going to make our second hop over to Rock Cliff, and we're going to have the uh, blood number of Chicago kind of converging on it. 24 Echo Cross, 1-5, number 9, Rep, sir, thank you. Stanley says good evening, welcome, good to see you. Four, Delay has a discovery flight on Thursday, nice. Oh, we're looking, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Ray 5, Quebec traffic at your uh, 1 to 2 o'clock, 7 miles, northwestbound, Mooney, 8,000. Uh, C7, so he should be below yeah, us. Yeah, looking at Charlie, 9, 5, back. Boston Center, uh, Lindbergh, 4395, climbing to 15,700. There's our friend Dane Flats on the frequency. Lindbergh, 4395, Boston Center, low climbing, team close to 270. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that traffic, guys. Lindbergh, 4395. Looking for a spec that's moving counter to the rest Center, of the terrain kind of passing by. Level three, three, two, climbing three, Setting five, us up at 10 o'clock, yeah, so Boston, should be ahead of the left wing a little bit. Uh, wait a minute. Number seven, Mike Alpha, descend to maintain one six sixteen thousand. Prominence on the right there. Six four eight one six six thousand four seven. Traffic inside nine five seven. Yeah. Boston Center, good evening. Flare eight two eight with you. Flare the whole three eight two. Yeah, we got him. He's passing the interview. Flare eight twenty eight, Boston Center, low. Air Canada two forty eight, contact Moncton Center one three two point two. Lockdown Center, Western 322, Air Canada, 248, thank you. Pass underneath, Delta so we are safe. Delta 162, descend to maintain, level 240. Descend flight level 240, descend to 162. All right, now we've overshot our... Number 4, Delta Victor, contact Bradley, approach 123.9 or 5. All right, 2395, 504 Delta Victor, we'll see you. Uh, let's first of all... Number 9, Romeo and Charlie, descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival for runway 27, Boston, Timber, 2965. The area that I've got to move this mouse is just Romeo, Charlie, put that request with the other control. 2395. For now, I'll have you descend via for runway 27. i got a sequence from other traffic behind you. Roger, uh, we can just take 27 number 1, 9, Romeo, Charlie. Descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival, ILS 27 number 1. Nice, right, so 2395. Let's get on that heading. Let's go ahead and swap our nav frequency in, 10.6. Heading to that on what? Uh, one ten point six on a one seven nine, therefore a three five nine. So let's flip the uh, OBS to match the heading bug here. Care eight thirty one, fair contact about five miles north of the Putnam of R. Here okay, so to Hartford Airport to be a rear vector Notch direct. To the left. We're going to put it just with slight heading direction to get on that. Right vector is direct over to Hartford. And then uh, after Gardner, the next uh, sorry, for station up the line is going to be what? Montpelier at 631. Uh, and that tune in and be ready to go. Is doing the river visual, would you like that, or a different approach? Okay, so we're coming back into that now. We'll pop it back into nav mode. Uh, 
we're going to do the uh, LDA. Uh, we're still at uh, 2200. Care, 831, expect the LDA runway uh, to approach. So, we'll see that. where Here's the mix. Right. So, yeah, 1525 still, so we'll go in Richard to about 1475. Okay, so, yeah, good. Everything's good. Let's go ahead and check in with our new controller here. Bradley approached 35 before Delta Victor 8000. 5148 Victor, Bradley approach. Bradley with center, 2967. 2967, 504 Delta Victor. 6, 7, so it's a couple notches higher than where it was. Uh, one thing to note, guys, for those of you new to flying in uh, realistic ATC airspace, ATC controlled airspace, you'll notice, notice that when I hand it off from one controller to another, the only thing I need to give is my call sign and my altitude. You don't need to give a position report such as uh, you know, 20, uh, seven miles north of the care 195 Prairie Coach. Prairie Coach, two nine six seven. Two nine six seven. Care one hundred five. What was I north of? Putnam VOR. You didn't even. I didn't need to give a position report reference uh, to Putnam VOR because I had been handed off from Boston Center to um, Bradley Approach. So they already knew where I was. They had already coordinated that handoff in an automated fashion, but they had still coordinated that handoff ahead of time. So Bradley knew I was coming, they knew where uh, to look for me, and they had already, in, the, in their scope system, I was already correlated, my radar return was already correlated to a tag that included my call sign. So I didn't need to give a position report, because all that's been done already, and that transfers over. So all I needed to, to do was re-verify the mode C altitude that I was reporting, so the new controller can, can say that the altitude on the scope is indeed what I just said it was. future pilot for you says you don't even need to give the altitude half the time. So yeah, the, the, the what's the rule on that future pilot? If you're being transferred within the same facility, then you don't need to re-verify the mode C. Uh, if you're going from one center to another, you technically are supposed to re-verify mode C. Uh, I'm not 100% certain how it works as I was just handed from center to a Bradley approach. In reality, I would have been handed from Cape approach to um, to, I guess, Boston, or no, yeah, it would have been handed from Cape Approach to Providence Approach to, um, to, uh, <laughs> Bradley Approach. So I don't know how that works, like, would you have to have, to have verified it in that case or not? Uh, since it all falls within Boston Center, I don't know. I just, it's easier just to give the altitude. But, yeah, there is, uh, not necessarily a requirement to re-verify mode C every single time. But the rules on that are a little bit nebulous. Care 195, you can the LDA. You real guys probably know more more than I do what uh, constitutes within the same facility. Like that that sim makes that a little bit complex VOR because alpha. different pieces of it get inherited upwards and whatnot. It gets a little money. Uh, care 195, you can expect your alpha approach. It doesn't hurt to give the, the altitude uh, every also, time. In other words. Possible, like but the position the report like, uh, doesn't uh, have to be given unless you were not previously uh, radar correlated. Uh, yeah, from one controller to another, then uh, hey, approved, uh, that position report doesn't need to be done. When do you give a position on a handoff? You're not just used to providing uh, it. Yeah, you're giving extra information. If you, if you already heard the words radar no, contact, five, you zero, no longer seven, need to give a position report departure. until you hear radar With services three, five, zero, at nine, There, nine, there nine, are a few rare exceptions flying to that, such as if you're flying in an area that reasons. does not have radar coverage, or if you're flying in an area that's a mandatory reporting point. For the most part, once you hear the words radar contact, you are forgiven from having to give a position report ever again in that same flight, unless you hear radar services terminated and then um, are reacquired down the line. That sim, um, it, it, again, the, the water's getting muddy on that sim delay because on an IFR flight on, on the real world, 
at least in the U.S., you uh, typically see, are under at, uh, positive air traffic control feet. services the I entire can come way. Up to probably about One from radar contact to radar, to radar services terminated, or from radar contact to uh, care turn off the taxi. Yeah. You're under radar to services. Harbor VR, that'd be great. All right, 170 greater to Hartford. Um, where it gets weird on that sim is you pass in and out of airspace that is staffed. So when you are coming back in, let's say say we were doing a flight tonight um, from New York to Indy, but we were coming through Washington's airspace. Number 514 Delta Victor, contact Watson there on 134.7. Have a good flight. All right, 34-7, 5 before that Finish that point in just a moment. Wait, 2-4, clear for takeoff. All course departure approved, 2-4, clear for takeoff, number 9, press here. Just to 12 18, descend via the Roebuck for your arrival, runway 27, the Boston altimeter is 2 9 6 5 but let's say we're, we originate at Allentown, follow a uh, path that comes down to the south and west, and then we come over here to Charleston. Ordinarily, you'd be radar contact, and then you'd be hand handed off to East Controller along the way to get to Charleston and then land, and then that's the end of your radar services. Or if you're landing at a non-tower field right before you get there, they'll say radar service terminate. Or no, actually, cancel IFR, you can get radar service terminated. Actually, uh, let's see, cross. yeah, I'm muddying it up. Anyway, forget that. Let's do this. Descend and maintain flight. But what happens zero, when you leave New York Center's airspace and you go into this unstaffed Center airspace and you pick up again on the west side of that transition by Indy, you're going to need to give a position report again. Anybody who's going to be sending me text chats right now, I'm way too busy to be accepting them, so go ahead and just ask me on frequency. Center 514 Delta Victor's back with the 8,000. 514 Delta Victor, Boston Center, hello, Manchester, altimeter 2963. 2963, 5 for Delta Victor. 2963, so we're going to end it back down there. Uh, Boston Center with you, Cessna uh, Station 750, Charlie Gulf, Whiskey Whiskey Papa, fly level 200, on route uh, for Quebec City. Charlie Gulf, Whiskey Whiskey Papa, Boston Center, hello. Boston Center, good evening, Air Canada, 224, flight low, 330, climbing 370. Canada, 224, Boston, low. Ray Romeo, Sierra, contact New York Center, 125.32. 125, thank you, A, Mr. Uh, flight level is What VOR are we flying to right now? We are headed direct to Gardner, I believe. Nine you. miles from it, and it's 110.6. Pretty sure Gardner. Russia 275, contact yep. 110.6. And then again, similarly as before, after we pass Gardner, we're, we're not going to be on East Tango Airways. We can't be on East Tango Airways. We're going to be just direct to. Montpelier on 116.9. Now, I don't think we're going to be picking up Montpelier on 116.9 right away. We can actually, let's check that, 116.9. This is going to be a good opportunity for us to use this uh, NAV2 radio, 116.9. We'll swap that in and we'll see if we've got any signal on it. Nope, doesn't appear that we do. So we won't be able to navigate direct to 116.9 just yet. So what we'll do is we'll pass over this Gardner on 110.6, and Sky Vector says that's a 004, right? UPS 810, cross crank, out of maintain 7000, New York altimeter is 2965. Yeah, 004 for I think that says 94 miles. Cross crank at 7000, UPS 810. Air Canada 4291, descend via the J Fund, correction, the Ocean 5 right, runway so 7. So get ready to make a slight right turn. We'll descend uh, via the Ocean 5 arrival, runway 27, altimeter 29, Air Canada 4291. Air Canada 4291, thanks, 260 knots for now, and then public speeds resumed at Ocean. 
five point five. Uh, we'll uh, reduce to two six zero knots for now and re resume uh, speeds uh, back at Ocean for Air Canada forty two ninety one. Delays is a kind of concern. Not being able to hear a CFI over the radio. Two eight zero knots. Is that something that people start to notice? Are you talking about that sim or real world? That sim. That sim. You know, obviously we got a lot of feedback. Forty four point zero two. That sim. You know, obviously we got a lot of feedback. With being able to balance our own sounds. All that. If you're talking real world, I have no idea. Now, delay, I do say that you know your CFI is going to be talking to you over an intercom. So you'll have you'll have them in your headset, if I understand correctly. So you should be able to balance the sound in your real world headset also. But I would defer that question to somebody who has some experience in that regard. Alright, so we're gonna go northbound from Gardner on a 004 as soon as we pass it over. DME as can I read the DME contact, Montreal, my head or slightly off screen. I can see it, maybe you guys can't. But 1.5, 1.4, remember it's not going to count down to zero because we're 8,000 feet above it, so we're about 1.3 miles above it. So we should be flipping over right now, matter of fact, 1.3, 1.2. Yeah, okay, so let's go into heading mode. Charlie Golf, Whiskey, Lima, Alpha, descend to via the Rossi to Reset the OBS to runway uh, 35. Manchester One, two, three, four. All right, to send me the Rosie 2435 and the radio should kind of come back in. Might be that we turned it a little bit short. Might correct to the left a little bit and let that get sorted out. Okay, looks like I turned it a little bit short, so we'll. 1218 Boston approach one Direct three back to the left. We'll let that Very close into the VOR. You don't need to put in a rat intercept. Via the robust three arrival runway 27, Boston altimeter 2965. Kind of yeah, so, so we I'm going to exaggerate the angle slightly as we came in. You know, and we intended to turn up and follow this line. What I did was maybe turn a little bit short. American 292 cleared direct and Ebony. following this line. I don't need to put in a 30 degree correction here. A very gentle correction, since we're this close in, will still get the job done. Further away, the further away you are, a minor deviation can translate to a greater distance. Remember, remember the deviation showing you the angle, it's not showing you the distance. So even just a two or three degree deviation puts you out here. I'm sorry, that's supposed to be a straight line. So a gentle correction angle won't fix it as easily. So further out, you do need to correct more aggressively to get back on. Because again, the deviation shows the angle, not the distance that you Now that I've said all that, Express 219 contact uh, Monk okay, Center, so one we'll put in a slightly more aggressive correction. I was afraid we'd skid it all the way across in here. Um, let's go ahead and make a tank switch. Let's go ahead and get our uh, boost pump running. Engine gauges all look good. We switch from the right tank to the left tank. Engine gauges still look good. Boost pump is off. Let's just correct it just a little bit more and get back over on that 004. So Stanley says for delay that you would need to pass the FAA here. Boston Center, good afternoon. 5077 Juliet at 900,000. Understanding is, is, if I don't pass that, I'm only going to be able to fly out of uncontrolled airspace. All right, okay with that. But I'd love to be able to fly more or less unrestricted, yeah. So, I'd, I, again, I 
defer that to those in the chat who have some knowledge on the subject. Alright, so we're northbound from Gardner. We're inbound to Montpelier, 116.9. We don't yet have any signal on 116.9 yet. That will show up here on this VOR2 gauge when we do. We must have a, a wind. Wind coming from the left to the right, because this is a pretty radical left direction that still hasn't quite put us on the air. Right. So I guess we've got a, a, a fairly robust left west to east wind going now. So that's affecting us today. Once we get it over to where we're confident that it's intercepting that course, we'll go ahead and pop it back into nav. Aviation fever says, yeah, I had a 140 knot crosswind in the west. Not a very fun ride, oh goodness. Oh, aviation fever's flying down to Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah, we did that on stream in the 737-700 uh, uh, not too long ago, actually. Um, about a month ago, because I, I then, two days after I did it on stream, I was on that same flight as a passenger. Heading down to visit my parents. Back into nav mode. We'll center up the heading bug now. Once we get to Montpelier VOR, we are only 38 miles out from our destination. So let's start. Let's get a little bit ahead. 128.12 UPS 8 10. Here's the, here's the Antarctica. We don't need that anymore. Uh, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to open the airport diagram. Oh, that's this. Idiot. I meant to open this airport diagram. I was like, well, that's the same runway configuration the Antarctica has. <laughs> okay. So here's Burlington. <laughs> So primary runway looks like a 3-3 three, three and a 1-5. We got a secondary one, two, runway that's zero, a 1-1-9, which 1, 1, is 4,000 feet, so that'd be plenty for a million to land on uh, if we need to. Two, uh, one, uh, zero, looks like this sorry, ramp up here is Air National Guard. General aviation is down here off of Charlie, it looks like. We got that's some left turn one, two, zero, sorry, I'm shaking it up right now. Uh, general Aviation ramp down here off of Charlie. Right. Now we got three, three general. <coughs> excuse me, three general aviation ramps. One off of Charlie, one off of Golf, and one off of Alpha over here near the terminal. Let's just say um, that we are going to go to the uh, GA parking next to the terminal. Let us get a. Uh, our observation there to see what our preferred uh, landing direction would be, 33 or 15, or whether the winds are uh, more conducive to maybe taking that 1 or 1 9. Yeah, 26.2, it happens. So just, just refresh the browser or the, or the, uh, or the app, whatever, the link fixes it. Boston approach. Good evening, American 796 with you at a 17,700 um, on the Norwich Center. Still on Boston Center. Let's come over here and do a uh, METAR. Okay, BTV. Burlington, Vermont. So 360 at 6 might land you to think we would want that one by one, but it's only 6 knots. So six your primary landing runway is 3-3, we'll take that probably. We could, we could do, I'd like to see what instrument approaches they have available as well, keeping in mind that we're going to turn right heading 360, then vectors for traffic, got someone climbing underneath you now. So 360 and 6, 2974. And statue uh, okay, few clouds at 6500. Doesn't look like there's going to be any visibility uh, concerns. Let us see what we've got. So 3-3 or runway 1 would be our 
Bravo 7 plus 6 0 8. If you do get unfrozen, I'll need immediate turn flight level, or correction, 3 6 0, right turn 3 6 0. Excuse I love me, I tack in, I tack in. Alright, we got it. So here's, here's the standard approach ILS will look DMV to runway 3 3, or IS will look to 1 way 1 1 5. Looks like we've got some our net, well, we got a VOR approach to runway 1. That could be fun. Where's that? Really, probably don't need an instrument approach at all. We probably could take a visual approach. Nice thing about this instrument approach to runway 33 is it has a feeder right off of Montpelier, which is our final, final fix in the uh, route that we found anyway. So I think easy enough to just say we take the uh, ILS runway 33 approach. And we'll let them know. We can even let them know that we can take it right off of. Uh, Right off of Montpelier. Canada 4291, thanks for your help. Right turn Save direct ocean, some, uh, continue to descend via Ocean 5, runway 27. Why don't we do that, guys? We'll just take, right we'll just take this straight ocean, off of Montpelier. Continue to descend via Ocean 5, runway 27, Air Canada 4291. November 5, Charlie Heel, descend and maintain level 360. So we've got some Flight step down altitudes and then we intercept uh, at 3800. Yeah, I think that'll be easy enough. Let's see what the Boston Center air traffic Challenger Charlie Golf Wish will be out for about a minute. Boston Center Control. Sure thing, we'll report back, Charlie Golf Wish will be out for about a minute. Boston Center Control. Sure thing, we'll report back, Charlie Golf Wish will be out for about a minute. Okay, so I think that'll be our plan, guys. We'll, uh, let's run through a, a briefing, a full briefing of this. Left We're turn still back on probably about okay. 60 miles from, probably about 60 miles from that uh, VOR. We don't have received, uh, yeah, we're not receiving it just yet either. November 4, Fort Tango, descent at pilot's discretion, maintain one Yeah, the ATC audio is louder than I think it's because I'm getting away from the mic. I'm starting to just a little bit better if I'm more conscientious about having the mic in front of me. Delta 2162, Boston approach 133.0. Sorry about that. Delta 3302, Delta 2162, bye bye, sir. That a little bit better, guys. No, it's still a little lower. Delta 2162, 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 Okay. Uh, Alright, now we're doing now. Is that, the, that a little better? Alright, left base 2 4, thank you. Alright, thanks guys. Thanks, thank, you, uh, thank you for letting me know, no worries. Um, anyway, so we're, our, we're 32 miles north of Gardner. We're still waiting for a nav signal on. Uh, NAV 2, which is our Montpelier VOR. We know that that's in total a 94 mile leg, so we should be maybe slightly more than 60 miles away from Montpelier. We should maybe expect this to pop in over the next, just in a couple of minutes. Just in a couple more miles. But we'll see how we go. Fuel balance is still looking good. We're pulling off of the left tank. Left tank is still slightly heavier than the right, so we're good there. We're at uh, 2200 RPM. Oh, I just said it. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead and navigate directly down to that Montpelier VOR. Yeah, we got to watch. We're gonna little, picking up a little moisture here, so we need to be careful about icing. Eyes on this gauge right here. If it starts to go starts to go south for no discernible reason. We'll need to descend uh, into warmer air. Two nine six six five and four delta victor. Uh, just in case, guys, let's let's look at the chart and get a plan for. A quick diver, just in case. Six, six. I'll be glad to do that as soon as Moncton decides to accept the tag. 
clear. That's what so I was new, just wanting to Newport Parlin or Claremont Municipal CNH233. I'm going to tune 233 on the ADF just, you know, just so that if we have to uh, over, still have to pull so we'll a quick diver, again, we'll at least have an arrow pointing us right there. Uh, where's no, our ADF radio? Busy. I got it. I think it's there. So, 233. And swap that in. Okay, so we got an arrow pointing us to where we're going to divert to in case we need it. Uh, Roger, <laughs> lay just in case we need it. We VFR conditions there. We were going to plan to just enter on a left downwind for that, but we can do r and if it looks like IMC. And there were 77 Julius. Clearly up to you. Give the r and 25 or it's been 11 and 2 9 there in case we need it. Okay. All right, so backup plan is okay, in hand. Do the visual for the two five right now. Let's uh, go ahead and switch seven, over to where we're navigating inbound to Montpelier and one sixteen nine. And again, we're direct to it on whatever radio whatever radio we happen to center. It doesn't, we're not in one one in air right necessarily. Let's center the heading bug. Roger, over We're to the heading center, mode. Uh, 322 for air condition. 169. Lindbergh, 4395, cross F dot. Add and maintain 111,000. The Burlington altimeter is Center up the course. F dot 11,000. Back in the Lindbergh, nav mode. And then we will. Be ready. Uh, crossing, uh, I'm sorry, 110.3 and 326. Is the, uh, uh, Boston, 110.3 and 326. We'll set that in the heading bug just to have the Turn reference to it. Approach if we have to go alpha. missed on that, what's the plan? If we have to go missed, 1,200, then 2,800 direct. Burlington VOR, Burlington's on 117.5. Expect the ILS 3 3 approach into Burlington starting at Montpelier. Just going to request exactly that, 5 and 4 out to Victor Rod. Delta 1267, Boston approach 133.0. Seventy-three zero for Delta 1267 tonight. Uh, so if we have to go missed, it's 117.5. Is our missed approach fix on Burlington VOR? Swap that in. 2800 in the inside. Yep, 2800. Uh, not Southwest receiving 15, anything on that. We're going to be about outbound on 216. So we'll go ahead and get that set in case we need it, and then the whole course we'd have to flip it around to, to get to it. We're going to follow that up, 216. Okay, so we got that set. 2,800 if we go missed. Let's just run through this whole thing, guys. Just, just step by step, let's run through it. All right, frequency and course... Not yet set. 110.3 is in the standby. 3.26 is set on the heading box. So frequency and course on standby. Missed approach frequency and course set. Minimums for an ILS straight in would be 6.08. Touchdown elevation is 3.34. Tango Bradley approach one two three point nine or five. So, so six oh eight. Four, we're, we're basically we can't call it six hundred for round figures. We have to call it something higher. We'll call it six fifty for uh, round figures. The uh, forecast ceiling we said was something like eighty five hundred. Let's just update just to see if there's any major changes. Sixty five hundred. Sorry. Center, your skull is supposed to be with Moncton. I haven't accepted that change. Three three four. Still supposed to be with Moncton. Talk to them, please. BTV. 29.75, so there's a little slight difference now. Zero, 0.10 zero at 7, so still a mostly northbound wind, so it'll be a slight left to right crosswind. Boston 
Delta Center. It's been at 75. Broken layer at 7,000. So we should be, the broken layer means we may not have visibility when we start the descent. But, uh, but we should have the, should have visibility quite early on this, uh, on this procedure. So not expecting any major issues. Um, so approach frequency, of course, it's standby. Missed approach course and frequency. Set minimums discussed, we we'll, we'll essentially call it 650. Uh, ceiling is 7,000, should be okay there. Crosswind, there'll be a very slight left to right. Missed approach procedure, uh, we said it's 1,200 straight and then 2,800 to Burlington on the left turn. Turn off would be a left also. Okay, so our bri briefing is complete. Yeah, here we come through the clouds, guys. Let's watch the airspeed and make sure that it doesn't start dipping. If we if we do suddenly start losing uh, airspeed because of icing again, our divert point is over here over our left shoulder now, somewhere right along that river probably. Up oh, right down there. So that's where we're going if we suddenly Delta start falling out of the sky. I do need a readback, sir, so you understand what you're supposed to do. I send it via text. You pretty much just have to read it back and make sure you know what you're doing. I, I apologize. Okay. Delta 0104, cross, cross space and, and maintain it. Uh, vent. The altimeter is 29.65. Thank you. Care 336, Boston Center. Thanks for your patience. Keep altimeter 2964. Right. Expect ILS 24. Pool, um, what was the gadget on the wing? So I, I believe these are um, static discharge antenna, something like that. They're just flapping around a little bit. I thought maybe they were the antenna for the radios, for the comm radios, but I was told by somebody previously that they're for static discharge off the trailing edge of the wing. We got Fed Dave back with the subscription. Thank you, Fed Dave. Appreciate it. Oh, the little metal bit. Uh, that's our speed break. That our, is our spoiler. I very rarely use it, but in case, uh, I mean, I'll do it just, well, I can't. i got to pull the throttle all the way down to gain it. But, but, yeah, you do have a bit of a speed break in the Mooney. It will unfold. We uh, actually, Epstein, if you watch the beginning of the stream, I do I check that as part of our pre-flight. So if you want to see it in action, and the way I have that set in my controls, I don't know where the control for it is in the cockpit. I haven't seen it here. Um, maybe uh, Jay Smitty can tell us because his his, uh, his his dad flies one. But. Um, but I have it set up so that if I pull the throttle all the way out, I can pull it into what would be the reverser detente, and it'll deploy that spoiler. So that way, I, when I go to put throttle back in, I can't accidentally leave that spoiler deployed. Lambert 4395, contact Montreal arrivals, 132.85. Uh, Lambert 395 13285. Thank you for the ATC. Good night. Our friend Dane Flats there. Alright, so we're briefed for our approach. We're 33 miles from Montpelier VOR. Looks like um, our left tank is slightly lighter, but I'm going to let that run out. The la basically, the last thing we'll do before we cross over Montpelier VOR. Is we'll uh, switch to the right tank because that'll be the heavier one to uh, arrive in. Are we there yet, Ryan? Yeah, no, I know. This has definitely been a longer one than I normally do. That late time on target for this event has uh, really kind of thrown off my mojo a little bit. <laughs> Code Blue 192 is here. Code Blue. Welcome to the stream. I appreciate you being here. Uh, since we have a few moments. It looks like it's just Iowa Scotsman, but uh, for those of you who might be new to the stream tonight, guys, we have two ongoing monthly raffles that we do on the stream every single month. And we we do the drawings toward the end of the month. 
The next drawing is going to be on Delta Friday, the 24th. Contact New York approach, one, two, eight, Raffle eight, number one, one two, is the one that you enter with the Twitch channel points, aka the alphabet points, the bottom of the chat panel there. You can cash in uh, 1,000 for one entry or 5,000 for six entries. The little button to allow yourself to do that is right there next to that alphabet's serial icon talk about the prizes in just a moment because there's a second raffle I'll tell you about here first but basically like I said 1,000 for one entry 5,000 gets you six for the price of five uh, given that that drawing is coming up this Friday and we are going to be off on Wednesday by the way so that'll be the last stream before the drawings but uh but yeah, go ahead and, and cash them in 1,000 at a time for one entry, 5,000 for six if you save up. And uh, we'll do the drawing toward the end of the stream on Friday, so you'll have some time on Friday to save up as well. That's how you get your entries in for our Alphabets Points raffle. The second raffle that we do is our landing rate raffle. Every time we perform a landing on the stream, we get your predictions as to the vertical descent rate upon touchdowns, and that'll be no different. We'll do those two landings and we'll get your predictions once we get established on the approach so not yet uh, but when I let you know at that point whoever is closest whether above or below to the actual descent rate uh, that person will get an automatic entry into raffle number two our landing rate raffle on Friday toward the end of the stream we'll do both drawings and each of the two winners, independently of one another, gets their choice of any item off of this list as their prize. That's our Slant Alpha merch items, including the t-shirt, the ball cap, the mask pad, the coffee mug, and the tote bag, which I'll ship to you at my cost anywhere you are in the world. Or if you prefer, we'll give you an electronic gift card either to Amazon or xplan.org. Or to the uh, sim market, uh, simmarket.com. We then reset all the entries and we start collecting them over again anew. So those of you who are here for the first time, you know, after Friday's drawing, you'll be in the new contest with a completely clean slate, and you'll be right on even keel with everybody else who's been here on the stream. So that way we keep it as fair as possible for new folks who are coming in, just do a clean slate drawing after everyone and. Everybody's got an, uh, an equal and fair shot at getting an entry in. A uh, beautiful thing about this approach is he can intercept us. I mean, he can descend us to seven. I mean, we're already at eight. We got seventeen point six miles to get from eight to seven. If he was saying he's not RNAV capable, or if he was saying hi to me, I didn't hear it. <laughs> um, well, we got 17 miles to get from 8,000, which we are at, at now, to 7,000 at Janet, where we uh, would intercept the, 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 the procedure at 7,000. So he don't even need to descend us. He just bang us straight onto the approach from right where we're at. And the beautiful thing about just following it right off of that feeder is he doesn't need to, he need to vector us. We already know how to get ourselves from Montpelier onto that final approach course. So that's saving him some work. I know he's been pretty busy, so. Yeah, so far. Now I think once you get below minus 10, the, the, the icing. Here, 336, turn 10 degrees right. It's less of a concern. Yeah. There's, it's really between negative 10 and positive 10 is what I'm told is where icing is your worst concern. So now it might be cold enough that we wouldn't have to worry as much. I don't know exactly about how all that stuff works. I just know that this plane has no anti-icing capability. So since we're further north, what would be our diversion plan now if we suddenly hit really bad icing? Uh, I guess this Montpelier, yeah, instead of circling back to this Claremont, I think our uh, Montpelier VOR would give us some guidance to this airport that's just to the north and west in case we got icing so bad that we couldn't make it to Burlington. Lady 
Four Delta Victor, cross Montpelier at or above 7,000, cleared ILS 33. All right, Montpelier at or above 7, and clear for the ILS 33, 514 Delta Victor. All right, well, at or above 7 includes 8. And like I said, we don't need to send to 7 until we're past Montpelier. As a matter of fact, it's only going to take us about 3.5 miles to get from 8 to 7. So we don't need to start descending until we're like probably 14 miles past Montpelier. I did say though that coming into Montpelier, we would want to do one more tank switch to make sure that as we land, we're drawing from our heaviest tank. So we will switch from the left to the right here, just prior to making that, uh, just prior to making that uh, turn. Don't worry, guys, because if we hit really bad icing, Red Bull will give us more wings. Southwest 2376, New York Center, 125.32. Good day. Over New York, thanks. We'll see ya. All right, so Montpelier. Papa, cross Lemur, Lima, Echo, Mike, Oscar, Romeo. Lemur at and maintain 6,000. Come on, 10 miles away. Now, what is the first first step? Is uh, at or above at and maintain, please. 319 uh, off of off of that. So 319 off of the VOR, and then the course is a 326. <laughs> Yeah, 26.2, I, uh, I have given up any hope that, uh, that we would be sponsored by Red Bull. I would, I would be a full-time streamer if I was sponsored by Red Bull. But despite my numerous petitions for said sponsorship, I have not received it. <laughs> 534, Boston Center, hello. Uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get, get the tank switched on. The uh, fuel pump running. Let's go ahead and switch. The engine indications all look good. We'll switch from left tank to right tank. Fuel pump now off. Everything is still looking good with engine indications. Might be too cool for icing. Yeah, exactly. We were just saying that, Epstein. 12, 12 below. You don't hit it as uh, readily. It, between negative 10 and 10 is where you are most susceptible to it. And I don't understand the physics necessarily, but that's what I've been told. Um, but also, we also we also know that icing in MSFS is sometimes way more aggressive than it's supposed to be. So I probably just, you know, not taking any chances. You always kind of want to have a backup plan ready anyway. But because of the possibility of icing, especially once we start descending into warmer air and passing through that critical zone. Always want to kind of have a backup plan ready. Uh, DME, yeah, is down here. Who was asking that? No, sorry. Uh, DME box is down here. Um, it's also on the um, the Garmin display. I know it's hard for you. When, when I have this, this, the screen up over here, I know you guys can't see it. That's why I try to call out the distances for you. Boston Center, good evening. Uh, Airspeed's holding yeah, steady right now, so of course we would see some indication of icing on the uh, windshield as well. Yeah, okay, so good fixings. That's a really nice 
uh, layman's understanding. I appreciate that. All right, guys, going to get a little bit busy, so I apologize if I'm not able to keep up in the chat. But we are commencing our approach. I, I, once I am... I'll let you know when to start putting the predictions in. It's a little early yet. Okay, let's go into heading mode. We're now going to come out of this on 16.9. I'm sorry, 116.9 on a... Uh, I probably turned a little early. On a 3... One nine for seventeen point six miles. So eight two zero and down. Okay. Oh. Thought I turned early and then I undershot it. It's okay. We'll get it. So good fixing basically says when it's below negative ten, anything that is going to turn into ice already has turned into ice. And then when it's Above positive 10, it's too warm for it to freeze. So that, that makes a lot of sense. I appreciate that explanation. Okay, so now we're outbound from Montpelier on that 319. We're going to go 17.6 miles, and then we're going to join the localizer. Our NAV 2 is tuned to our Merida missed approach fix, which is that Burlington VOR. And I've got it set to the 216 in order for us to join it coming outbound from the airport. But then if we were going to end up in that hole, we're going to have to flip that around to 036 to the hole. Or just eyeball it off of the reverse sensing. But either way. Okay, so we're not doing a bang-up job of tracking. I should, could pop it into nav mode. Um, but we do need to get established on that 319 outbound. And we can start descending to 7,000, which, as I said, we don't really need to do until we are 14 and change out from Montpelier. All right, and the other thing I will do once we are ready to go is I'm pro probably going to hand fly the rest of this approach in. So we'll get ready to do that here. So 110.3 and 326. Boston Center, King Air 7628 Golf. King Air 7628 Golf, Boston. Uh, 28 Golf is about uh, 30 miles southwest of Boston. It's going to be as far to JFK. Would like to play following, please. King Air 28 Golf, Squawk 4747. 4747. Uh, 7, 6.6, 6.7 miles west of Montpelier. So we got another 10, 10 miles or so to go before we need to be intercepting that uh, localizer. I'm just, I'm just going to steer this via heading mode rather than uh, go back into nav mode to track that. I think we got it pretty close to dialed in, and we're going to be close enough, I think. Since we're just about to flip this over onto the localizer and uh, and the new course, it's, it doesn't make sense to go into nav mode, go back into heading mode, heading mode rather, um, switch over to the local and uh, start tracking that. So save ourselves a step, we'll just stay in heading mode. We're, we're adhering to that close enough for now that... Uh, that will take it. Air Canada 18 Tango cross F dot add and maintain 111,000. Uh, airspeed starting to falter a little bit here, guys. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We're going to be on the descent here soon, anyway. All right, so we're still on heading mode. I'm going to go ahead and swap in the localizer, even though it's a little bit early yet, but I'm going to go ahead and swap that in just to be ahead of the game. 110.3 and 326. I'm sorry, 3, yeah, 326. 
So there's 330, 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't know why that would come in showing that we're left, of course. Okay, it's it's currently it's thinking that we're doing the ILS 15, that's why. Air 336, winds 280 at Niner, runway 24, clear the land. So it's just a, the sim is giving us the reciprocal. Instead of IVOE, it's giving us the uh, IBTV. Oh, there it goes. No, still. Okay, that's the same fr same uh, transmitter then. Up oh, there it goes. So that that is correctly now showing us um, right of course, correcting to the left. All right, good, good, good. And so yeah, it flipped over while I was uh, just talking about. It. Okay, to 20 miles out is when we're supposed to be at 7,000. So 23 and a half is when I'll start the descent. So one more mile. Airspeed's looking good, guys. We should be okay from an icing standpoint, and I am about to make it my airplane here. Missed approach altitude's 2,800. Start a gentle descent, start getting it down to 7,000. Set a gentle descent, jeez. That's 7,000 by 20 miles out. Go ahead and center up the heading bug just as a visual. Guys, you can uh, start with some predictions into the chat regarding your guesses to the vertical descent rate upon touchdown. No bot command needed. Positive or negative number. Minus sign not even needed. We know that you need a descent rate either way. Check the busy altimeter. 2985. Maybe 2965, 2965. Some power downs. We need to correct here to the left. 7,000 by 20 miles, okay, we'll level it out here. Our send via the Roebuck 3 arrival, Boston Island 2966, number 192 CM. All right, so within 20 now, we can drop down to 5,500 by 15 miles. Start slowly bringing props and mix forward. Okay, localizer's looking good. Speed's coming down nicely. What did I say, 55 by 15, okay. So by 18, we could be at 65, that's good. So that's oh, drifting a little bit to the right here. the rest of the way and guys we'll see how it goes not really seeing a runway as of yet should be pretty much straight in front of us that's 16.3 so we got another mile and a half to go another 
250 feet of altitude. Boston Center, Kier 336, clear the runway 24. A little bit left, of course, now, so direct slightly to the right. There's 5,500. And at 15.4, so we do need to kind of level it out here just for about a, well, well we're, we're good, 15.1, 15.0, okay, there's 5,500. So now we can go to 4,800 by 12.8. We have not yet started deploying flaps and gear yet. Where are you going to come today? Maybe our runway up here. Not 100% certain. Maybe here. It's not jumping out at me, obviously, yet. 24, Delta Victor, wind Burlington, 0107, runway 33, clear to land. They land 33, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Taxi light on to remind ourselves we've got our landing clearance. Okay, now inside of 15, we can go down to 4800 at 12.8. Oh, I see. I see the field, I think. We're 12.4, 12.3, okay. Well, oh, geez, we're gonna start start battling the uh, turbulence here. Get up on the rudder pedals. Uh, so inside of 12.8, we can go to 3,800 by 9.6. And at 3,800 and 9.6, we'll just go ahead and intercept the glide slope. So what did I say, 38? Okay, so we'll continue bringing the speed down. My uh, mix and props are full forward now. Yeah, I, I see the runway. It's it's white rather than uh, paved. Uh, I mean, rather than uh, black black asphalt plowed. Paved and plowed. <laughs> That's a 10.0, so 9.6, we could be at 3,800, so we're still a little high. And I'm gonna go yeah, ahead. Yeah, Tango, confirm you're gonna cross EPDOT at 11,000. You're still at 260, and you got 40 miles to your EPDOT. Need to cross it at 11,000, sir. Start getting the, uh, Speed down below the white arc. Radio check for Boston Center. Five by five. Five by five. Canada one eight Tango. Since you're one of the people that responded, you're who I want to talk to. You. Confirm you're going to cross F dot at eleven thousand so forty miles. You're still cruising two six zero. Okay, thirty eight hundred nine point six. Okay, so we are good. We can oh, just go yeah. ahead and intercept the glide slope. Send attraction at F dot. Pull the power back as much as I can before it yells. Yeah, there we go. We'll level okay, it out just to... An immediate descent now and expedite. Charlie Guy from okay. Charlie Golf, Mike Alpha Officer. Into the white arc now, we'll go ahead and get flaps. Service terminated, frequency change approved. Okay. And gear. 22-8 for Mike Alpha Officer, good day, sir. And that'll help us maintain... Chair Papa, New York approach on 128.12, good night. That'll help us maintain uh, airspeed of 100 knots on the way in, and then we'll cut it to 85 down uh, short final Papa, and 80 over the numbers. All right, we're 
through 3,000. Localizers. Boston Center, Vision Jet, November 3338, Tango. Localizers okay, Requesting speed's IFR okay. To Ventures as filed. And sorry, where are you, sir? Uh, currently at Gabreski Airport. Is that Kilo Fox or Oscar Kilo? Affirmative. I think that's going to be with New York. Did you try New York Approach 128.12? No, sir, I did not. All right, I know the airspace is kind of uh, tangled down there, but just give him a shout on 128.12 and see if he'll handle you. 128.12, uh, one, two, one, two, will do, thank you. All right. So remember, minimums are we're going to call 650. Uh, climbing us uh, straight to 1200 and climbing left to 2800 if we go missed it is a left turn off off the runway if we make it there successfully be closing up here shortly we do have our landing clearance over to Unicom, you should be number one in the field into Boston Raider service terminated good night we do right, have see you later. two additional uh, notches of flaps Bye -bye. to get out August 1748 we're going to be closing up here shortly if New York approach is still online give him a show uh, I'd say about other than that have a good day We've already got our landing clearance. Okay, we copy that for a walk to 1748, good night. Just a little bit high on glide slope. We knew it was going to be a slight right to left crosswind because the winds were favoring that northbound. So I do need to kind of keep those over to the right a little bit here. Okay, so we can see there is, it does look like the, the, the pavement's been plowed to some extent. Drifting on, uh... Drifting high on glide slope. Let's get that sorted out. There came a one tango contact, Montreal arrivals, 132.85, good night. Alright, we're down to a three mile final. Let's go ahead and start getting the, uh... Rest of the speed under okay, control, we'll get the rest of the flaps out. Montreal Center on 128.77, good Over to Center, 128.775, uh, Air Canada 77.45. Okay. Localizer's looking good, glide slope's coming back in. Second notch of flaps coming in. Boston Center, TBM 7 here, Papa, apologize, I think you had a hand up for me. Sorry, number 9070, Papa, one more time, please. Uh, I think you might have had a third hand notch flaps in. Okay, landing yes, checks. Now Appreciate complete. So flaps set and check. Gears down and green. Landing, landing clearance is received. Left turn off if we go successfully down and uh, climbing left. Let's say 1200 straight and then 2800 left if we go missed. Landing checks are complete. Sure to, uh, sorry to call you on your own short final. I'll be closing up here pretty imminently. Uh, once you're down the field, it's yours. Tax your discretion. Have a good night. All right, we'll tax you out discretion. 514 Delta We'll see you. Central aircraft, you're on this frequency. Boston Center is closing up. You can switch over to Unicom. Have a good night. Be safe. We'll see you next time. All right, speed shot up a little bit. It's a little high, a little fast. we still got time to fix it. Still need to keep that right wing down. Still getting blown off to the left here. Okay, profile's looking better. Speed needs to come back down. Still, still getting blown off to the left. Alright, 
not too bad. Pull all the way down to that dock, get that moving brake out. Help us slow down. <laughs> that is the crossing runway, so we'll just go ahead and roll it past that. Make the next left here. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a fight on short final. That right to left crosswind was much stronger than what was in the observation, but it's part of what you deal with. Sometimes, uh, sometimes what is observed what is in the observation and what is actually going on is not the same. Flaps can be stowed, strobes off, landing lights off, recognition lights off. That's everything. Yeah, nav and beacon are still on, taxi light's still on. We're gonna roll it down to the south of the terminal. And the GA ramp uh, just beyond that. Oh, Hito Heat, that's the other one I can turn off. I guess if that's where the terminal ends, then I guess the GA parking is actually going to be down at that next building. Okay. No man's land down here. Man, they really don't want GA at anywhere near the terminal in Vermont. <laughs> I'm spinning around so that the door is on the building side. And get the parking brake on. Taxi light off. If I can remember what that switch was. Okay, hold on. Yeah, good there. Um, all right, well, let's run through the uh, turnaround checklist here. We got the flaps stowed, the strobe recognition and landing lights are off, pito heat is off. Parking brake is set, taxi lights off. We can get the transponder back to uh, 1200 and standby. One, two, zero, zero. Yeah, Jimbo Fox, are you on VATSIM? Pretty much if you're hearing voices coming over the stream that aren't mine, I'm on VATSIM. <laughs> um, let's see, we got... Uh, yeah, trim can be reset, so it's uh, kind of in the middle of that takeoff range there. Yeah, kind of maybe top end of the takeoff range there. So I was doing some of the trim with the wheel, some of the trim with the thumb switch. I'm, I'm still not completely sold on that wheel yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes as I get more used to it. Uh, actually, at cruise, I was using the wheel more than the thumb switch. During the approach, I was using the thumb, the thumb switch more. Um... All right, so how did we do with our ETA? Keeping in mind that I got airborne 10 minutes later than anticipated, so I do need to add 10 here. Uh, expected to be on the ground at, so we'll say, 9.30, and on the blocks at 9.35, and we're, up, well, we're pretty close to that, only five minutes after that. Let's see how we did with 175 pounds of fuel remaining in the tanks. 77 and 76 is uh, a little bit short actually so that's that would be 152 ish so we're about 20 we're about 25 pounds short 120 23 or so pounds short but uh, still should have plenty for our um, 
alternates, reserves, and contingencies for leg two. So we're going to leave it as is. All right, let's look at your predictions, guys. We got the Kitty Monster stopping in there just a moment ago. Touchdown rate upon arrival. Vertical descent rate upon touchdown. That is 129. Look at that, 13 knot right to left crosswind. So, yeah, pretty significant crosswind. Still managed to get it down pretty gently there. 129 was the uh, winning number. Nice G, as Kitty Monster says. Oh, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> um, 129 was the winning number. 87, 69, 142... 105, 77. We got M Stein with 126, only three away. So we have anybody else between 126 and 132. We got 112, 115, 95, 44. Yeah, it looks like it's M Stein with the 126. So congrats, M Stein. Go and get your ticket written out here. Uh, into Friday's drawing. We are going to be drawing this uh, our landing rate raffle. On Friday, we're off Wednesday, so this will be the second to last entry, our, our uh, arrival into um, Rockcliffe in Canada will be our last entry into this month's landing rate raffle. So it's M. Stein, and we are at K, B, T, V on 2, whatever this is. What's this today? 20th, I think? Yeah. All right, congrats to M. Stein. And uh, I'll tell you what, guys, we'll take a quick intermission out of the cockpit, and we will get ready for our second leg. We're joining the Virtual USA Flying Club tonight, going up to Rock Cliff, uh, just outside of Ottawa, in uh, the Great White North. And we will... Uh, Crazy Canucks says, hope you enjoyed the service tonight. No, you guys were fantastic, as always. I appreciate it, and uh, thank you for staying on. Uh, until we were almost down, and I died. the uh, <laughs> the understanding about calling us a short final was uh, was appreciated as well. Although we were pretty stable by then, so it wasn't a big deal. No, very much appreciate the service as always, and uh, appreciate you being on as well. All right, let's get a nice little uh, nice little intermission shot here for you. And we will take a quick break out of the cockpit. We got uh, another leg left to do. We're joining the Virtual USA Flying Club for Winterlude, Ottawa. We fly into Rock Cliff, and we will talk more about exactly what's going on with that flight here in just a moment. Thanks for the follow, by the way, Brayman. I didn't catch catch that on the way in, but uh, caught us a little bit of a busy time there. But Brayman, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate you being with us tonight. Hopefully you'll join us for leg number two, guys. Lots of flying left to do. Don't go anywhere. Talk to you in there.
All right, friends, back with you. Welcome back. Another one of our Slant Alpha adventures underway here as we make our way to Rock Cliff, just outside of Ottawa, Canada. It is an event called Winterlude Ottawa, an event host hosted by the Virtual USA Flying Club. Now, they did a... It is a general fly-in, so there's a, simply just a kind of what we call a time-on-target drill, all uh, intending to be there between 11 Eastern and midnight. Now, they set the time on target a little later than they normally do for these events. But Montreal? Yeah, Ottawa's over here, I think. Yep, so here we are uh, going to Rockcliffe. Um, so they set the time on target a little later than they have traditionally, and that is because they were, are trying to come up with some events that are a little bit more friendly to our West Coast members of the club, the Virtual USA Flying Club, of course, put together by our friend Jet Pilot Cinnamon, and a uh, club that gathers over on the its Discord server and arranges, say, uh, between three and five general aviation-themed events per month. And the whole purpose of the club is to keep general aviation events, you know, robust and up and running on the VATSIM network, which, you know, at times sometimes can seem kind of airliner-centric. So the club puts together these events uh, approximately weekly, like I said, three to five a month on average. And tonight's is taking us out to a real-world event called Winterlude. And uh, our destination tonight is Rockcliffe Airport in Ottawa. Leg number two, just about ready to get underway now, and uh, oh, looks like someone has just arrived here at uh, Boston, or um, Burlington rather. You guys saw that? Yeah. 3499er Mike in there behind us. Oh, I know who that is. That's another member of, uh, of the Virtual USA Flying Club. Alright, so probably kind of following us up there. Anyway, so we are going from Burlington over to uh, Rockcliffe. We don't have Boston Center Online with us anymore. Uh, it's possible that another controller would pop in randomly, but for right now, we're going to be on our own for that second leg. Let's go ahead and take it from the top of the flow list. Intending to get airborne by the top of the hour, I believe, was my goal. We'll see if we can... Yeah, intending to be airborne nine minutes from now. We'll probably be a few minutes late on that, but... Uh get out here as promptly as we can. Let's go ahead and send our second flight plan over the network. Although there's nobody to validate it with right now, we'll go ahead and get it, uh, get it in there as we are going BTV to C, uh, where are we, CY, RO, with our alternate being uh, C, Y, O, W, right? We're going to try and be airborne by 10, 11 to 1 to 0300. The en route time a little bit shorter than the first one here. This one's going to be a 0 and 59 minutes. Fuel available 2 hours and 30 minutes. So we know it's a little bit less than that, but you know, but on paper we got an hour and a half of uh, alternate reserves and contingencies. 180 in the cruise and 8,000 and the altitude is fine. And very similarly, which we'll show you, to uh, the latter part of this route that we just did, we're on mostly Tango Airways, so there's no uh, there's no conventionally navigable airways up in this area of the country, and then I'll say country of the continent, I guess more properly, since we're going to be in two different countries. Don't need that approach anymore. Let's go over to Sky Vector, blank out our route, and let's put our new one in K B T V the C. Y O or R O, and you can see that all we've got here, blue airways that you would have to have a GPS to navigate. And of course, those of you who are new to the channel, you're like, "Well, what's he talking about? He's got a GPS right there." Now, in this channel, we pretend that this wouldn't be here. We, we a lot of times we fly airplanes that don't have our nav capability modeled in. This one does happen to, but we just ignore it. We pretend it's not there. Uh, our COM one and nav one is here we would just imagine that it looks exactly like this one here sitting right on top of it. So no GPS capability in this plane, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean. So what's that leave us? Well, we can VFR, we could, we could then navigate through visual landmarks if we want. Um, 
we don't have as as detailed a VFR chart north of the border. But uh, of course, we do have Navigraph desktop charts app that we can look for VFR charts once we get north of uh, into Canada from the U.S. Um, but because of the questionable overcast uh, weather and you know other factors, I decided you know we we would want to do this IFR. So we're going to file a uh, route that we would navigate through instruments, but since we don't have a GPS and we can't follow any of these blue lines, what are we left with? Well, we do have this Messina VOR. Oh, you know what? This is another situation where that's technically not a VOR, is it? Or No, it is. It just doesn't have DME. I think. Oh, Koala points out that the flightplan.com does have free Canadian charts as well. Yeah, I find that I mean, it's it's that that's true. Um, I find that site a little cumbersome to manage. So outside of the U.S., I typically will go ahead and lean on my uh, Navigraph subscription. So this is a VOR, but without DME. So that's going to make things a little bit interesting for us to follow. Oh, it's TACANT. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. We'll go Sarnak Lake, maybe. No, that's DME only. So, yeah, everything up here is getting de decommissioned. Yeah, we do have some NDBs. So, up here we've got the Ottawa VOR, so we can, can go to there. And that's 59 miles. So let's do that. Let's do Potsdam, PTD, and then Yao. Okay, I'm gonna change that in my flight plan. Boy, the tribulations of being slant alpha. <laughs> okay, so that should make life interesting for us. And uh, you can see off airway um, minimum altitudes would be 8,000 feet here going westbound. So we'll, uh, we'll plan for that. If only this was 20 years ago, right? Exactly. General Watt. All right, but anyway, so that's uh, that's our plan. We'll navigate direct out to that Potsdam, and then we should be 61 miles. We should be just, uh, worst case scenario, we're just outside of the reception range of Ottawa VOR. But if we get going north and west on a 329 bearing off of Potsdam, that should point us in the right direction for us to then eventually pick up that, um, that Ottawa VOR. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if the Ottawa's a high one or a low one. I guess if it's on this chart, that would tell us. Yeah, I think it's a low one. But anyway, we should be able to get ourselves in the vicinity and be able to pick it up. But that's our route, and let's go ahead and get back over here and start getting underway with it. And right, so flight plan has been sent. Oh, I forgot. That's one wall. While we got VPiled over here, let's update our METAR at KPBTV, rather. Uh, 0107. Temp 0 to 2975. Where we're going, we don't need roads. So 29, or what did I say? 75. Field elevation here is. 335. I said we're showing a little bit lower. Than, uh, than that, but that's okay. Within within margin of error for sure. Com radios. At this point, we're going to set this to 22.8 because we are no longer within a uh, staffed area on that sim. But we will need to be ready to switch over to the Canadian uh, center frequency or whatever the equivalent to center is in. Canada, I'm not sure. I guess it is center, yeah. Twenty-two 
2877 Montreal, 2877. So we'll have that pre tuned. And ready to go. All right, so altimeter set, origin field elevation set, comm radio set as needed. Nobody to obtain our clearance from. So we will uh, set 2,000. You don't want to have it 1,200 if you're IFR. So we'll set it to 2,000 with the uh, mode altitude on. That's fine. Uh, nav and ADF tuners is needed. Okay, so since we are first, like I said, going to navigate directly westbound, I'll tell you what. Well, uh, Burlington 1. I wonder if there's a uh, obstacle departure procedure. Let's just check real quick. It's a class Charlie airport, so you would normally not not have air traffic control here. Um, Takeoff minimums. Burlington, Vermont. Uh, no, can't read. <laughs> Burlington's further down. Beverly, Beverly, Bidford, Block Island, Boston, Boston, Brunswick. Okay, Burlington, Vermont. Departure procedure 3-3. 3 to 2400 before turning on a course. Okay, so that's not too bad. So we can deal with that. All right, where did I leave off, guys? Um, so 326 to 2400, and then as soon as we've surpassed 2400, we'll turn on course to this Potsdam NDB on 400, so we'll set our NDB receiver, something we don't often do on this channel, although we did uh, just as a backup navigation plan on our, our earlier leg. Uh, 400. We'll swap that in. Uh, not yet receiving it, but that's fine, because we're low elevation. Uh, 2400 was our minimum, so I'll just set that as a reminder that we have to surpass 2400 before we turn on course. Uh, and then we're just going to clear ourselves up to 8. And then once we pass Potsdam, Potsdam the VOR that we're going to be navigating to is on 114.6 to Ottawa, which we can go ahead and preset into that um, 114.6 Swap that in, and we will be navigating inbound to that on what course? Uh, it's not really, we're not on an airway there, so the, the exact course isn't super, super critical. But it's a 3 2, let's say 3 2 9. My old eyes, come on. 3 2 9. So we'll just set the course to a 3 30. Uh, it was on a 3 30. Uh, 326 is the runway heading that we have to climb on before we um, turn on course. So there's 330 and 326 set, so we're good there. All right. So navigation plan is dialed in. What's next? Heading bugs set, initial altitude, speed brake, and flaps were checked on leg one. We know they are operational. Flaps can be set for... Uh, oh, and uh, somebody was asking, this is our speed brake. If I pull the throttle all the way down, I don't know where the control is in the real Mooney, but for me, if I pull the throttle all the way down into what would be the reverser detente, our speed brake comes out, one of those on each side, and that helps to slow down. My, as a matter of pride, I try to manage speed in this aircraft properly to where I don't need that. And only have used it a couple of times. Um, anyway, so, flaps, uh, trim set, uh, taxi routing, if we're going to take off on 3-3 again, 
Uh, actually, let's just take off on one since we're already down here. We'll just take off on runway one. Why not? We got plenty of space on that. We'll do that. Uh, oh, so I guess that means we need to know the obstacle departure procedure from runway one. Take off minimums. Burlington, Vermont. Okay, 3200 on the runway heading 006. Okay, so change of plans here. Runway heading 006, and we need to attain at least 3200 before we turn. Okay, all right, now we're good. Giant pickle. How long will this flight be? Just about an hour. Uh, 26.2, just about an hour. All right, so taxi routing is then nice and short since we're just going, hey, right there. Uh, taxi routing is briefed, however. Taxi light, come on. Parking brake, come off. Away we go. Burlington traffic, Moody 5 and 4 Delta Victor taxiing out to runway 1, Burlington. You don't need to do a run up since we did that prior to our first trip. Oh, there's uh, runway 1, yep, by the way. Alright, so, intended to be airborne at uh, 10 o'clock, and looks like we'll be about 7 minutes late, so no, no big deal. Alright, remember, straight out uh, 006 to 3200, and then we can turn on course to that uh, NDB that we're not yet picking up. Anybody coming? No? Burlington traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victor departing runway 1, going to be IFR westbound left to turn out um, Burlington. Okay, here we go. Probes on, landing lights on, recognition lights on, pizza heat on. Get and get her lined up. Yeah, temps and pressure's all looking good. Engines indicating normally. Let's go ahead and set our takeoff power. We're straight out to 3200, and then we can make that left turn. Knots, 80 knots. Let's fly her gently off. Okay, gear coming up. Keep it on the runway heading. Throw some up trim so I'm not yanking so hard on the yoke here. in 
Oh, I don't think I even had the flaps deployed. That's okay. Get the manifold pressure dropped to uh, 24. RPMs dropped to 2400. Lean the mix out until it's in the uh, blue arc. And are we receiving? We're still not receiving anything on that NDB. Right here. Might have to come up with an alternate navigation plan, guys. If we do, what would that alternate be? I guess we'd go off of the Burlington VOR, BTV, then PTD, and then uh, YOW. So if we had to do a 301 off of uh, Burlington, that'd be our backup plan. Yeah, it looks like that'll be the way, guys, so let's uh, come down here, 117.5, swap that in, oops, swap that in, I said, oh, Berlin traffic 25 before not to be clear, runway 1, Burlington. Pressure 24. All right, now let's set a course that takes us directly to that Burlington VOR. to keep 100 or so knots in the climb 105 and the climb is our best rate usually uh, we can s take it up to 8,000 now since we achieved enough to turn on course again not going directly to uh, Berlin on any specific radial just whatever one happens to center it so I'm going to continue to adjust that arrow that course arrow just to keep it centered pressure, 2400 on the RPMs, lean to the blue arc, so we're good there, engine management's good, we'll pitch down just to make sure that we are climbing at about 105, center up that arrow, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, let's lose the flight director, I have no idea what it's trying to tell us we need to do, but what mode we have that in, but let's just drop that so it's not distracting us. So bear with me in the chat, guys. S still trying to get the plane stable and then get on our revise. I had to revise our route just to, like midstream there. But we're going to go outbound from Burlington on a 301. this point let's spin the heading bug around five point nine five point eight what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the turn there's no need for us to go all the way back to Burlington VOR we can cut the turn a little bit here 
I'll just put myself on like a uh, 45 degree intercept angle, something like that. Let's just make sure, it's hard to tell, 301. That looks about right there. But we'll just do about a 45 degree intercept angle. Still good. Are we, um, let's see, we're on the right hand tank. What I want to do here is 2400. Let's get the manifold pressure back up to 24. Lean to the, uh, lean to the blue section of the arc there. And then let's do a real quick tank switch and get our, our plane pulling off that left-hand tank here. So fuel pump on. Uh, where is it? Okay, engine still, engine indication is looking stable. Switch from right to left. Engine indication still looking stable. Fuel pump off. Alright, we're coming up on our cruise of 8,000. Start trimming her out. Just remember, as we trim it out level at 8 and the speed comes up, we're going to need to keep trimming out to keep 8,000. Now the, the manifold pressure, I got the throttle all the way open and the best manifold pressure we can manage is 22 and a half here. So we already kind of have our cruise power down at 22 where we want it. I can slowly back down the RPMs though to 2200. Continuing to put some down trim in it. Twenty-two and twenty-two. All right, we'll lean, lean the mix out until it peaks. You see the exhaust gas temp over there to the right, fourteen fifty, fourteen seventy, fourteen eighty, fifteen thirty. Okay, so fifteen thirty is about the highest it goes. So we're going to push that back in now. Until it goes about 50 degrees from that, so 1480. Close enough. Still working on trimming it out to 8,000. Speed should be stabilizing now, so that should become easier. And then that nav course is coming in as well, so I'm going to start a gentle right turn just to intercept it. Still not receiving anything on that NDB, curiously. Engine management of piston aircraft makes my head spin, says delay. Yeah, and it's it's a little bit more complicated in a variable pitch plane because, you know, you can have the blades kind of not angled that far where they're not pulling as much air to the rear. Or you can have them angled steeper so where they're pulling more air to the rear. And that doesn't... It, it, it has an effect on both RPMs and the power, right? Because it's like, so think of it this way. 
the delay. This might um, this might help when you have a variable pitch engine, variable pitch prop. Um, think of it, if you have ever driven, or at least have the concept of, of driving a manual transmission automobile. All right, and you're climbing a hill. Right, you're on a highway, and you're in a long, sustained climb up a hill at 65 miles an hour. And you're pushing down on the gas in fifth gear, but the engine is starting to struggle to maintain that 55 because of the steepness of the hill. So you would downshift the car into fourth, you push down on the gas again, the engine's going to be turning quicker, but you're still climbing at the same angle and at the same power, just at a higher RPM. So that kind of is analogous to uh, using a, a finer pitch to make a climb. Well, the momentum now the momentum is uh, determined by the by the, the the plane's speed. The momentum is is, the, is determined by the movement, not by the power you're applying to achieve the movement. But I mean, you could you could turn, you know, fewer RPMs, but it would be more stress on the engine, or you could turn higher RPMs at at lower power, and it would be less stress on the engine to achieve the same forward speed and rate of climb in that in that on that hill. Anyway, so I hope that at least kind of gives you, you know, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of an analogy for you to, to help you. Are there any tricks for setting the prop lever? No, well, no, no tricks, Giant Pickle, just you have to read the Pilot Operating Handbook. Um, to the recommended power settings for each phase. So at takeoff, you should be setting it to achieve a certain RPM, and then in the climb, you should be setting it to achieve a certain RPM, and then at cruise, you should be setting it to achieve a certain RPM. No trick, just memorization. Now, I, I take the book's values for the Mooney, and I, I average them out. You know, I, I don't worry so much about all the different variances due to atmospheric density and all that stuff. I basically use full power, full, a full and full for takeoff, 24 and 24 for climb, and 22 and 22 for cruise. So that's those are kind of just averaged out values. If I really owned this Mooney and I really was trying to be careful about managing it properly so that uh, it wouldn't uh, die, I would be a lot more careful about making the proper adjustments for atmospheric density and what have you. Yeah, and you take off and land with a prop full forward fisto. Why is that? Well, because you want to be in that nice low gear for that power climb. Um, not only from takeoff, but on the on the landing, you want to be in that nice low gear for that power climb, and all in case all of a sudden you need to get up that hill. Yeah, cooling isn't as much a consideration during takeoff and landing. In any plane, takeoff and go around. Um, is going to be stressful on the engine. What you then need to do is make sure that you are, are stressing the engine as uh, for as brief a period as possible. Yeah, Delay says, I understand how engine management works. It's just sort of genius how to change thrust power without changing the engine power. I gotcha, yeah. So you, you really know it more, better than I do. I'm kind of giving you a layman's analogy. And, but hopefully, that, I mean, that just helps you conceive, like... The purpose of it. It's, it is really analogous to using different gears in a car. When you don't need as much power, but you need speed, you go to a higher gear. When you don't need as much speed, but you need more power, you go to a lower gear. 
kind of the same thing in the prop. To uh, take care of engine in cruise, so you're really so that's where we are leaning to uh, that 50 degrees rich peak, and of course there are different philosophies on that too. With Lena Peak settings, um, can also help cooling. the The philosophy on the rich peak is there's a little bit of fuel. You got that. So the peak is where that optimum fuel and uh, air mixture is, right? And, and what they call sto stoichiometric stoichiometric reaction or whatever. The perfect amount of fuel and mix of, of and air to, to, to perform combustion. The reason you run a little bit richer peak is to leave a little bit fuel in that equation intentionally, so that fuel left over after the combustion helps to cool um, the pistons, and it gets spit out the the, the gas pipe, or the the exhaust pipe. So cooling management is is really about that, uh, keeping that mix properly leaned. And again, watered down layman's understanding. I, yeah, I know, I butchered, I butchered the word. <laughs> Yeah, you knew what I was getting at. I butchered the word, but you knew what I was getting at. This is a little bit concerning. This NDB that's supposed to be on frequency 400, we're just uh, not receiving it at all. We're now 27 miles west of Burlington. And that should have, oh, it's 76 miles away. Okay, so that still might be out there. Well, since it's going to be that far, let's go ahead and let the autopilot take over some of the heavy lifting for us. Autopilot, altitude, nav. Certified for flight into known icing conditions? Um, no. But icing conditions are all to the south now. No icing warnings. We have cold and we have moisture, however, we're below the critical temperature as 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 explained to us. Yeah, we know the, what's reported and what's observed. I mean, when you're when you're, as Robert Randazzo from uh, PMTG says, when you're popping across the cloud tops, that's when you're most vulnerable to the icing. All right. Well, let's. Comes the ice giant pickle says the same. Yeah, let's let's keep an eye on our airspeed. I think you were somebody was asking earlier about just the barest formation along the bottom of the windshield. Yeah, we saw that from the moment we booted up. So that hasn't really changed. But yeah, let's watch and see if this air airspeed needle starts to uh, maybe you know what. Maybe we take it up to 10.
if I could remember. getting us there. Well, I guess we can just... We'll fly it. We'll fly it up there. That should help us get a little bit higher above the uh, cloud tops and should get us a little bit colder than that critical temperature and we should hopefully be okay. But the other thing to do would be to be ready with a backup plan in case that icing starts to hit us. Where are we now? Just now, out of curiosity. Now the airspeed's dropping off now, but that's because we're in a climb. <laughs> So right now it looks like Malone, Dufert, or Potsdam Municipal. The Potsdam, right near that Potsdam NDB. And we now do have an arrow pointing us in that direction, so that's good. some of that yoke flutter. Let's just uh, shake that out. Okay, and there's our 10. Level it out here. Do we have oxygen? So the Mooney is modeled with it. There are oxygen controls down here have it active. Ten thousands. Ten thousands doable without it. back out to to 10 you can go ahead and ease the uh, RPMs back down to 2200 
Yeah, so the cruise, I'm using the trim wheel to kind of keep it stable. For the climbs and descents, I find that I'm, I'm mostly using that thumb switch. We'll see how that changes as I get more comfortable. And of course, as soon as we get it stabilized, we can hand the controls back over to auto. tank switch here in a moment. Missed the reference with the white powder and the bear. Obviously something I need to educate myself on. Alright, so 76 miles west of the uh, VOR should be the Potsdam NDB. We're going to go outbound from the NDB on a 329. And then we're going to come into Ottawa VOR on 114.6 on about a 329. So the heading bug, basically a 330. We can even, just as a preview, we can set that up here as well. The Ottawa VOR, what did I say it was frequency wise? One, 14.6. So we'll get that's okay, 114.6 is in the standby there. Swap it in there. Not yet receiving anything. Alright, let's go ahead and get the fuel pump on. Engine indications all look stable. Engine indication still looks stable. Fuel pump comes off. Uh, and I guess the next thing to do is to check and see so once we get north and west bound from Potsdam Sixty-one miles from Ottawa VOR, so we can call ourselves sixty miles southeast of Ottawa, or we can call us. I don't know if they would know on the Canadian ATC side whether they would know that Potsdam NDB or not. Oh, there's a new movie coming out. Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll 
I'll look into the reference. Obviously, I'm... Oh, ATC all went to bed? I thought they were specifically staffing for this event. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> Okay, well, that's fine. That makes that easier. One thing I do need to do is I need to get up my uh, Navigraph Desktop Charts app. Because we are going to be flying into CYRO. No stars. A nine out of two seven. Just south of the river. Now, well, the only approaches we've got there are our nav approaches. Okay, well. Visual approach it is. C Y R O. Nope, okay. C Y O W is Ottawa, right next to it. Zero one zero at eleven, so a northbound wind. So nine and two seven, pretty much equally palatable at this point. Twenty nine seventy, I think that says two. Twenty nine seventy eight. Well, to just to clarify, guys, to clarify, this is a, an event that was put on by the Virtual USA Flying Club. Now, they did have somebody in the club, one of the club members was like, oh, yeah, I'll be available, I'll provide ATC services. But I don't know if they knew what the time parameters were, because they were, there was ATC on earlier. They had uh, both the Ottawa approach or terminal control unit, whatever they call it. Uh, they had that staffed and then um, this, the uh, center, Montreal center was on. But I think they may have just not realized that the time frame of the event was later than we usually do it. So this, is, this isn't like a that can event or anything like that. Even for major events, it happens more often than you think. Yeah, no, that's that's true too, General Love. It's true. But yeah, this was not like a this wasn't an, an event that VATCAN put on. This is a virtual USA flying club. Oh, looks like we've lost our VOR navigation behind us. So let's go ahead and just pop it into heading mode, and we will. Just steer toward this NDB, basically. Let's then go ahead and pop this 14.6. And what did I say it was? A Okay, so we're pretty much steering right toward that NDB, and our purpose now, our charge, in order to navigate this route that we filed, is to come away from that Potsdam on a 329. That means our bearing to station, if we're flying a 329, that Potsdam should be right at our 6 o'clock.
see how we do. Uh, anyway, so what did we say the cloud cover was there? Reported cloud cover is nice. 15 statute miles, a few clouds at 15,000. So, shouldn't be any problem taking a visual. I wonder if we can close that. switch to the VFR chart there. So if we find this river, man, we shouldn't have any issue. Alright, that NDB has kind of fallen off behind us. Okay, well that means we're getting ready to make that turn. We want to turn to a 329, okay? Even though we're not yet receiving that VOR, we know that we want to turn to a 329. If we flew directly over the center of that NDB, then it would be behind us at a 6 o'clock position. We can turn this to our current heading, and we can get a number associated with that bearing behind us. I tend, to, even with the rotating card, unless it's a... Uh, an, uh, RMI, where this spins automatically with your current heading, I tend to leave the manually rotating cards alone because I would rather just deal with it in terms of this is my 6 o'clock, this is my 12 o'clock, etc. Relative bearings, in other words. I want this on a relative bearing of 180. It looks like it's a little bit over my left shoulder. So I'm going to correct to the left... drift to the right it's going to trend it's going to trend toward the six o'clock it's going to trend toward behind me uh 26.2 the full show schedule is down underneath the about tab or it's over on our discord server uh, typically mondays wednesdays and fridays at 7 p.m but i'm off on wednesday and the full show schedule is right there under the uh, the about tab so you can always answer that question on your own. So what we did was we flew, we did a 30 degree correction for a few miles. We watched the arrow kind of trend toward the six o'clock position. Now I'm flying a 329. Well, it looks like I may be overcorrected just a spidge. So we could, we could come up just a few degrees to the right and then watch it trend back towards that 6 o'clock position a little bit. Still no uh, signal on the VOR. Actually, we got the VOR 114.6. We've got that tuned on both NAV1 and NAV2 at this point, so these gauges should both pop in once we get there.
as we come north and west off of that Potsdam NDB. And again, outbound on a 329. And that thing is almost directly off to our 6 o'clock. So we're not doing too bad with the bearing. We're about 3 or 4 degrees off, maybe. If it's slightly over our left shoulder, then I will correct a few degrees to the left. That should get us pretty close. It was 61 miles from where we crossed that. So I'm kind of surprised we're not receiving this VOR on 114.6. Six is indeed one and a half tunes. We got a fairly sizable lake with some islands down below us. Let's see if we can figure out where we are. is right here. If that's the case, there. Then we would have 46 miles to go, which is about 15 minutes to this VOR. Field elevation where we are going. Two hundred feet, basically. So, if we had nine thousand feet to lose to to, to uh, find ourselves at pattern altitude, nine times three is twenty-seven. Nine times a half is four and a half. So, twenty-seven and four and a half is say just over 30 miles. So if we, at 337, we were 15 minutes, 40 miles, I'm sorry, 30 miles. At 337, we were 45 miles. We're doing about three miles a minute. So in five minutes, three, seven, three and a half, 40. So 42 after, we would want to start our descent. looks like the clouds starting to part here and we should be able to kind of join that river whoops no I'm trying to bring the whole freaking window over there we go if we join the river kind of right here where the bend is if we can spot that then we'll know it's just up to the north and east like we are getting blown pretty well to the east. That means a westerly wind. That means we're probably going to want to land on 
And we just got our VOR in. 37 miles. All right, so when that gets to 30, we'll start our descent. And then we should be able to just cancel IFR and do the rest visually. Get to the VOR, we should basically be able to cut a right turn, follow the river, and I think probably a right break off into a left pattern to 27. I mean, if we follow the river, that's going to put us essentially on a 45 left down with the 27. Once we get close enough, we should start to hear the other participants, and we'll be able to tell what they are doing from a uh, active runway standpoints. Let's get an updated METAR at CYOW. Whoa, got one of those major weather shifts. Thank you, Microsoft Flight Sim. Appreciate it. Good looking out. Okay, 2978. So that, has, that hasn't changed. It's the same observation. So the wind coming out of the north at 11 knots doesn't really inform on uh, 9 or 27. But, like I said, we should be starting to get into range where we will start to hear some of the other club members making their traffic calls. Does look like there are a small handful of us that are still doing it this late. Now with myself, one other, and one on the ground. Just we're coming up on that 30 mile threshold. We will do one more tank switch. Get the fuel coming out of the left hand tank. And then we will start our descent, guys. Pilot's off, flight director's off, it's my airplane. Speed's definitely drifting up. But we can also shallow the descent. We don't need to... Uh, don't need to rush down. Basically, the number of miles we are from the airport times three should be, or the VOR, I guess, times three should be the altitude we're at, more or less. So, coming up on 24, we should be about 8,300 right now. So, yeah, we, we're doing okay. We can shallow the descent. So 
So he's going south to north, and then a left downwind to runway niner. Okay, got it. Alright, so 24. We should be about 8,000, and we are. Liking this descent rate. By 21 miles, we should be about 7,000. We're 21.9, 21.8. So there were there were two aircraft, Melvin and the other one both kind of had different ideas as to which runway they were using, but they've just sorted it out, um, and they've decided that they're both going to use runway nine. So we will do the same. I, I believe I see that bend in the river that uh, I was looking at on the chart. So the. Uh, Ottawa International Airport, oh, I think it's right below us. I think we're, we're basically going to pass right over that. By 18 miles, we should be about 6,000. <clears throat> 18.3, 18.2, 18.1. So we're doing good on the descent. So I think in Canada, so Smitty, Smitty was being picked on because he had a typo in his flight plan. It says it's VFR, so I don't need a flight plan most likely. I am the king of typos, though. I think a Canadian, I think in Canada, you do need a flight plan if you're doing a cross-country over a certain length, if I remember. So my, my the, the guy that took over as chief flight instructor of VATSTAR uh, is from the Ottawa area, in fact. We're probably flying right over his house right now. And I believe that uh, he told me that at some point years and years ago. That in Canada, VFR flight plans, cross-country flight plans over a certain length uh, from uh, from origin to destination do require a uh, flight plan, I think. Rockcliffe traffic, diamond 816, clear of runway diner. Rockcliffe traffic. All right, so it's 15 miles. We should be at uh, 5,000 feet, and we're... 15.5, 15.4. Don't hold me to that, guys. That's just, that's just that's remembering a conversation I had from before I started the live stream. So. All right, so we're 14 miles and we're still above 5,000. So um, that's fine, though, because. The VO, so the three miles, the, the general rule of thumb I was going to follow was going to put me at zero feet at the VOR. So the fact that we're a little bit high is fine. <laughs> but anyway, let's get this... Um,
see if we can kind of shortcut the turn here since they're using runway nine. And my plan is going to put me over two seven. Kind of kind of break off to the east here. I'm going to set the heading bug. In the field, small seven for Rockcliffe. Set the heading bug to the uh, runway nine um, heading. Okay, there's the city center, and Rockcliffe should be right in this vicinity here. reading the chart right. There's this island and then it's like right up beam that. So like this this cluster of white buildings right here might be it. Rockcliff traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victor's about, uh, say, 7 or 8 miles south, 3,500 descending. We're going to overfly field south to north, 1,500, then join a left down, or sorry, a pattern out to do 1,000, then we'll join a left down wind runway niner. Rockcliff. Uh, due to a poor landing by a diamond earlier, uh, Rockcliff is temporarily closed. Sweep up the pieces, we're coming in. Traffic, turning a giant pickle. He was making a joke. Rock Basically, his, uh, if you if you want to see, look at Melvin Leroy's stream. Uh, apparently, his landing wasn't very good. <clears throat> That's our friend Melvin. All right, I'm gonna bring the power back as much as I can without the plane yelling at me. Yeah, I'm going to go with that building right there being our destination. So let's get down to a thousand. Let's cut up and uh, straight across there. At Rockcliffe, Mooney 514 Delta Victor is now about uh, five miles south at 2300 descending. I'm uh, going to go south to north, 1000, then join a left downward on my niner, Rockcliffe. side of it. Rockcliffe traffic, mall 7 on uh, final runway 9, short final, Rockcliffe. Okay, yeah, we're heading right for the uh, library there, so we're good. <clears throat> Let's just keep 1500. Continue bringing the speed down. You guys can start putting some numbers into the chat as far as your predictions as to the vertical descent rate upon touchdown. And I guess really I should be at pattern altitude. We'll drop it to a thousand here. Uh, no, to thirteen, twelve hundred. I think the field elevation is two hundred, is it not? We'll go to twelve hundred. First notch of flaps coming in. So let's go. How far are we going to take the base turn? We're going to take it 30 seconds. And Rockwood traffic, clearly on Y9. Rockwood. 
Hey, nicely done, Captain. Rockcliffe traffic, Moody 514 out to Vickers overhead of the field, 1,300 northbound. Going to join a left downwind runway 9 or at Rock, Rockcliffe. Yeah, Rockcliffe Diamond uh, 816, we're going to cross runway 9 -er on the uh, unmarked uh, taxiway here to get on the north side. We're parking on the north side? Well, I see some GA. Uh, aircraft over here, all the buildings are on the south side. I just have the default scenery, so it didn't quite look right to me, so I'm, I'm over on the north side. Uh, okay, I'm going to park next to that. I, I installed that at uh, flightsim.to. I'm going to park next to the library for the closing shot, so I'll be on the south side. Alright, roger. Alright, second notch of flaps. We'll go ahead and get gear in. Foot forward. Yes, that's the beam the numbers. Rockcliffe traffic, Mooney 5 and 4 out to Victor left down with a beam the numbers, runway 9 or Rockcliffe. Uh, should be easy, nice, easy uh, visual reference here. We'll kind of aim for this little alcove, and that'll be our base to final turn. Guys, keep, keep the uh, predictions coming. Last call is going to be essentially uh, when we're lined up on final. Notch of flaps to come in, and uh, everything else is good to go. Rockcliffe traffic, Mooney 5 and Fort Alta Victor turning left base and then final now for runway 9 and Rockcliffe. Alright, last call for the predictions, guys, once we're lined up on final. shot slightly but we should be okay here all right flaps but checked gears down in green just a uh, left hand pattern if we go miss right off the runway if we make it down last call for the landing rate predictions we'll aim for 85 down final and 80 over the numbers fast. We've still got time to correct it, I think. Not terribly easy to see the pavement. No idea what I landed on, guys, but we're down. Yeah, I got nothing but white here. I have no idea what I landed on. Hopefully it was the wrong way. Yeah, that's strange. I look nice and smooth. <laughs> no clue. I don't even know how I could check, guys. All right, strobes off, landing lights off, recognition lights off, pitot heat can come off. I think I landed on a taxiway. I mean, I, I, I saw yellow signs, but there was really no way for me to tell.
Yeah, Harrison Ford moment. Well, Harrison Ford at least could see the pavement. In my defense. <laughs> This is definitely grass that we're parking in. All right, parking brake is on. Taxi light is off. <laughs> a good pilot always has an excuse, especially a sim pilot, Kenny Monster. Yeah, I mean, what? Reality, right? If you couldn't tell where the pavement was, you'd go around. Because you don't know what you're landing in, right? Whether there's going to be ruts or whatever. Kind of stupid, but it's a sip, so we decided to go ahead and set her down. Um, anyway, all right, let's look at uh, my predictions and your prediction. Well, let's finish up the uh, finish up the shutdown. Flaps were, st uh, flaps were not stowed. Get that done. Strobe recognition, landing lights, pito heat. Uh, did I get that off? Yeah, I did as well. Okay, so we're good there. Parking brake, taxi light, transponder. We'll go ahead and reset to uh, 1200 and shut it off. Uh, elevator trim, reset. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check our fuel and ETA real quick. Um, so we expected now, what did we say? We got airborne about seven minutes late, so we expected to be down at 11 or 10.59 and on the blocks at 11.04. And so by this math, it should be about 11.11 right now. And we're seven minutes beyond that. So we added another seven minutes of airborne delay somehow, probably just zigzagging around trying to find our, uh, well, we did change our navigation plan, so that, that extended the mileage a little bit. But overall, not too bad. And then supposed to have 94 pounds. Um, left in the tanks. I have a feeling we're a little short of that. We we were uh, minus, what did I say, 23, I think, on the first leg. So by all accounts, we should have about 71 pounds left over. Let's see how we did. I bet you it's even less than that. Yeah, it's another 20 pounds, another 21 pounds short. So we're, we're burning uh, about 20 more pounds an hour than what I accounted for, so I'm just going to have to uh, adjust my uh, numbers up. Again, the last couple of sim updates have changed a lot with respect to engine power. We, we had found the same thing in that BAE 146, so we'll just have to tweak our numbers until they're back in line. So we'll up the consumption hey, numbers traffic. just a little bit Diamond until, that, uh, yeah, until that's better, but it looks like, niner. again, overall, Runway. about 50 pounds short. So 50 pounds short over about two and a half hours of flying means it's uh, 20 to 25 pounds more per hour than uh, that I've been accounting for, so we'll fix that. Um, let's look at your predictions, guys. Traffic, that's really what you want to know, right? track, runway niner. Who gets the automatic Rockford. entry into our landing rate raffle, especially because this is the last entry before Friday's drawing, since I'll be off on Wednesday. 147, so not too bad considering I couldn't see pavement. 147. Who had it? Or who had close? 69, 120, 173, 135 looks like it's pretty close there. Bed Dave is 12 away. Anybody closer than 12? We have 107, 112. Uh, Odd Blue P has said G34 and then it's corrected it to 34. That's fine. Um, so Rock 1, diamond, uh, 35 one still the closest, 110, 136 be, uh, out VFR. comes in, Giant Pickle edging out Bed Dave by 1, Rock so that's now 11 away, Giant Pickle. Yep, there we go, that's going to do it guys, ben, Giant Pickle with the uh, 136. Soap-de-dope with the follow. That's one of the more uh, 
It's not rigged. I'm um, using Twitch username as I've lost. seen in a while. Thank you very much for the follow. We had a, a handful of folks that uh, said hello there a moment ago that I'll catch up on in the chat here just a moment. So who gets this giant pickle? And it's 316, although now that I know who you are, I know how to find you in case you're the winner. Uh, 314. 314. Giant Pickle 314 here at C Y R O on 220. All right, congrats to you and congrats to uh, who was it that got our first one? M Stein got the first one. So, congrats to our final two entrants into our landing rate raffle that will be pulled on Friday, guys. I'm going to go over uh, the raffle stuff in just a moment. Let's go ahead and finish up the shutdown of the plane and then we'll go into some wrap-up stuff here before we close up shop for the night. Uh, so, yeah, transponder is off. Radio Master can be turned off. Uh, let's do a quick live mag check. We're going to run the engines up just a little bit. We're going to blip the uh, magneto switch down for a moment just to make sure that the lead wire that kills power to it is indeed still attached and functional. So, blip. Okay, yeah, we did see that the engine started to die there for a moment, so all good. We'll go ahead and pull the throttle out, let that uh, settle back into uh, low idle. Go ahead and pull the mix. Prop stops. We're going to pull the prop lever down as well. And then we can turn the mag switch off. Uh, nav and beacon, alternator, and battery. Okay, there we go. So, out we go, guys. And, uh, yeah, let's get ourselves a nice closing shot here by the lab library. Or the museum, or whatever the heck this is. I think they said it was a library when I saw it on the uh, flightsim.to. Oh, no, let's do this and tilt downward. Yeah, okay. I'm just looking for a nice closing shot. There we go. Nice with the sun peeking over the edge. That's cool. Okay, very cool. Let's uh, center it up a little bit better. There we are. All right, friends. Well, thanks for flying along with us. Appreciate uh, all of the kind words there that uh, were in the chat. I know I didn't get a chance to say hi to everybody. Oh, and there goes our friend. I stuck around for the shot, and uh, now I'm running away. I sure speed was the one said, you're absolutely amazing. We love you. Thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, anyone else who popped into the chat earlier... And if I didn't say hi, I know we had some few, a handful of uh, newer folks or folks that I don't remember being here before. Odd Blue P was one of them. So, hello. We got, uh, who else? I know I'm scrolling back quite a bit here, trying to catch up on some stuff in the chat that, uh, that I didn't see before. At any rate, guys, if I didn't say hi to you in the chat, I'd certainly apologize. It was not personal. Always invite you to jump in on our Discord server. The link's on the lower right-hand side of your screen, and that's a great way to uh, interact with us in, in, uh, in the moments that I'm <laughs> a little bit busy with the airplane. So not always able to respond real-time in the chat, but uh, jump in on that Discord server, join the conversation that way, ask any questions about anything that you um, saw or heard tonight, and uh, or if you were just trying to say hi, that's absolutely fine, too. Um... Anyway, so the raffles, we were talking about those, and if you were uh, newer to the channel, you might not have really understood exactly what was going on, but we'll spell it out for you. Um, we got two, two raffles, and we do the drawings every single month on this channel. Uh, so the, our February drawing is actually going to be on Friday's stream, which, is the, as luck would have it, would be our very next stream from tonight. Raffle number one is the one that you enter with the Twitch channel points, which we call here Alphabets points. You got the Alphabets serial icon down there at the bottom of the chat panel, and the button next to that allows you to cash those in in terms of 1,000 points for one entry or 5,000 points for six entries. So it is advantageous to save up, get 5,000, cash them in at once, you get six entries for the price of five, improves your odds slightly over cashing them in 1,000 at a time, but you're more than welcome to do that however you choose. Um, we'll talk about the prizes in a moment, but the other raffle, we're going to do both drawings on Friday. The other raffle is our landing rate raffle, and that, you should have a sense now of how that works. Uh, we get those predictions into the chat prior to arrival. Once we get established either in the pattern or on our approach, and the closest predictor to uh, the actual descent rate in terms of that uh, G's 
uh, pop-up stats window that I pull over and show you afterwards. Uh, whoever had it closest gets an automatic entry into our monthly landing rate raffle. When we do the drawing on Friday, each of the two winners, one, alpha, one from the Alphabet's Fishbowl and one from the Landing Rate Fishbowl, each of the two then gets an, uh, their choice of any one item off of this prize vault list. So we'll be giving away two things on Friday, one to the Alphabet's winner, one to the Landing Rate winner. And each of those two folks gets to choose what their prize is, any of the Slant Alpha merch items before you, or if you don't want any of my junk, which, hey, I'm going to ship it to you at my cost anywhere in the world, but if you still would prefer... Uh, instead, to do a gift card, then you can choose either Amazon or explain.org or Sim Market, and uh, we'll get you those electronically. So, whichever prize you choose um, is yours if you happen to be one of the two names that comes out of our two fish bowls on Friday. We then reset all the entries, and then for the March drawing, we start from a clean slate. So, you new folks to the stream will have a fair shot at getting in there. You have a level playing field with all the folks that have been around the stream forever. Uh, once we get into that March drawing, we all start from uh, from scratch, and therefore you have a as fair a shot as anyone else of getting a winning entry in. So that's how we do that. Um, and that, again, that drawing will be on Friday. Our typical show schedule is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. However, as we have mentioned, we are going to be uh, not with you on Wednesday. Personal obligation that is going to preclude preclude us being here so our next stream is in fact on friday we've got a uh, event that we're hosting uh, called the triple crown friday night ops event we're teaming up with a couple other artcs to, to artccs to feature the fields that are uh, featured in the triple crown uh, of horse racing so baltimore being the home of one of those three uh, near right near pimlico race course is uh, one of the three featured fields and uh, hopefully well i'm not sure exactly where i'll be controlling we haven't uh, gotten that word just yet but uh, we'll see whether i end up on an approach and departure position there at baltimore or some sort of a local position somewhere uh, in the air tcc we'll see but uh, that will that's what we will bring you on friday starting at 7 p.m u.s eastern time the full show schedule as i mentioned before is down there under the about tab or it's over on our Discord server, so you can check that out and see what we're going to be up to on any given night. We mostly fly general aviation. We mostly do the old-school analog radio-based navigation, as you saw tonight. No GPS uh, capability in our planes, or we pretend that there isn't anyway. And uh, we navigate the plane with that old-school analog uh, navigation method from VORs and NDBs, like you saw tonight. That sort of thing. That's what Slant Alpha means, after all. We do break that mold occasionally. We uh, fly the PNDD 737 from time to time or the working title CJ4 mod from time to time. Uh, so we don't uh, stick to that channel theme explicitly, but uh, for the most part we do. And uh, again, that show schedule lets you know when you can expect what to happen. We also do some VATSIM air traffic control, which is what we're going to be doing with you on Friday, as we just mentioned. Not sure where yet, but, uh, but I do that within the Washington ARTCC. Uh, rated up to approach and departure at this point, so um, not sure exactly what position you'll see soon, but uh, but yeah, we'll let you know. Keep us keep tabs on us on our Discord server or on our Twitter Twitter feed there, uh, Slant Alpha on Twitter.com. We'll keep you up to date with anything going on with the stream. If we have to postpone or switch topics or technical difficulties like tonight, we got started a little late. That's a great way to keep uh, up to speed. If you don't see us go live at seven. You can always kind of poke in on that Twitter and see if we've posted an announcement. And tonight we just got about 15 minutes late start. But uh, again, we always keep you posted on what's going on on the stream on that Twitter. If we need to change things around or uh, miss a night or switch nights or what have you. Also, we try and keep you up to speed with the latest sim news and and that sim news on that Twitter. So do give that a follow if you would like to stay up to, to uh, speed on what's going on in the community. Last but not least, our YouTube channel. The link's on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Uh, archives all of our old flight broadcasts, but also we have some VATSIM tutorials over there if you're considering getting on VATSIM, but you're intimidated by not knowing what to say or what call sign to connect with or what these slant code equipment suffixes mean or how to read VFR sectionals or put a route together. Got some good information over there you can check out on that, uh, on that YouTube channel and a playlist called that sim tutorials so do feel free to check those out if you have questions ask them right there in the comments or find us on the stream or over in our discord server we're happy to help 
newer folks get started on the Vets in Network however we can. Last but not least, you guys have seen that ad flashing across the bottom of the screen for Flight Sim Expo. Giant trade show for flight simulation enthusiasts happens more or less every year, to the, and this year will be at the end of June in Houston, Texas, just over four months away now. Houston, Texas, June 23rd through the 25th. And uh, I'll be out there in person and hope that you all will be as well. Um, all kinds of stuff on display from any of your favorite uh, hardware developers, software developers, service providers related to flight simulation and also to real world aviation even. <clears throat> we'll be out there and uh, also lots of seminars and presentations and discussion panels and, uh, and, and, and vendors unveiling their new products out there. So uh, do get out there if you can. Also, it's an opportunity for all of us who make friends over these networks to gather up once a year in person and really get a chance to meet in person and, and get to know one another on more of a personal level than over these bits and bytes here. So hopefully you'll be able to get out there. If you do, the promo code that has been flashing across the bottom of that screen has uh, the potential to save you 10% off of that conference registration fee. Of course, the hotel and the airfare is always the more daunting task as far as the, the cost of it goes. They do have some discounts over there, flightsimexpo.com. They've got some discounts available to get you uh, to and from and and housed for that event as well. But the promo code AIRSTRIPPY that flashed across the bottom of the screen there a few times will get you 10% off of the conference registration at the very least. $80 for the weekend presently goes up to $90 in April, but you at least get that 10% discount if you use that promo code AIRSTRIPPY, which will be coming across the bottom of the screen there again for you momentarily. All right, friends. Well, thanks for riding along again. I hope that you enjoyed if it was your first time here, and we will talk to you again really soon. Let's figure out who we are going to send Looks like our friend uh, 8033 Fox is still airborne. Not sure if he's doing this event or what else he's up to at the moment. Um, but he was, yeah, his stream title says he's coming here. Maybe he's getting a late start or maybe he's heading back. I'm not sure exactly what stage of the event he's in. However, um, he is in a um, home-built, full-scale 172 cockpit that he has in his house. And uh, he has the monitor set up so perfectly that it gives you the illusion that he's in an actual plane. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw his stream, that's what I thought I was watching. Uh, Michael is a fantastic streamer, and the, the setup is just amazing, and he'll, he'll be happy to tell you all about it. I'm going to send you over to him momentarily, so do sit tight. We'll just shoot you over to him. Again, it's November 8033 and then the word Fox. N 8033 and the word Fox, but just sit tight and we'll send you over to him automatically you will be amazed at what you see and, and you, you you will not believe that it's not an actual real plane that he's in at the moment uh that's all right there in his house so uh sit sit tight and check that out and enjoy we will see you back on friday guys uh so in the meantime between now and then we hope that you have a great week and stay happy and healthy and safe in all of your own travels and adventures in the meantime we'll talk to you soon take care